All right, what's up, boys and girls? We got part 20 here today. Fucking made it to part 20. Um, well, you know, we got uh, two individuals. Obviously, I listed them. I'm saving the third one for a surprise. And trust me, you'll it'll be a surprise and you'll get a kick out of it. I promise. Uh, shout out to Sasha for the thumbnail. This one got the most votes, so I went ahead and used this one. But we are going to use the other ones as well. I'm going to try to use as many pictures as I can throughout. Um, as most of you know, this is the final one. going to try to go out with the bang. Again, thank you to Sasha for the fucking thumbnails, starting with, I think it was either part six or part seven. He's provided every thumbnail since then. And just a massive, massive thank you. I'll have shout outs for a couple of people who contributed at the end. Uh, thank you for being here for the fucking premiere. Thank you for watching afterwards, commenting, supporting subscribing everything fucking thank you we got frenolith for part one of episode 20 to catch a pay pig let's fucking go build a giant meatball says kenny what the hell <clears throat> frenolith says people have been whispering me i said viewers choice they want a wild squirrel statue to stalk the jasper statue you want because because of the silly story that a squirrel uh, could be a danger to Jasper, which a squirrel could be a danger to Jasper. If he went outside, he's never been encountered by, by, by any kind of other animal like that before. And a wild squirrel will defend itself with its teeth and its claws, and Jasper doesn't have claws. He could get hurt by a squirrel. Especially because, you know, he, again, no front claws. You'd never let that kind of cat outside because he can't defend itself. But, you know, immature dumb fuck kids and people who legally restream me are so dumb in the head, they don't understand that. They think that it's like, oh, Phil's an idiot. He, oh, yeah, he's so afraid his cat's gonna get hurt by a squirrel. You're a fucking idiot. You're an immature, dumb fuck, brainless, uneducated moron who doesn't have any responsibility in your real fucking life, so you don't understand what it's like to actually have a pet and to take care of it, so go fuck yourself. It's not funny that I made a comment that a squirrel could hurt Jasper. A squirrel could hurt Jasper, you dumb shits. But if you really want a squirrel statue, we can build a squirrel statue in Minecraft. So there you go. It's up to you. <clears throat> All right, Burp Lover, if you're serious about getting a band, you have to email me at darksidephilahotmail.com. Let me know what's going on and you, that you apologize and I'll look into it. You can't just keep begging on a stream. It ain't going to happen. <clears throat> now, friend said, well, maybe let's not do the squirrel then. <laughs> Sambuka took me $10. So sorry to hear it's bad out there. I don't understand fully, but I'll help out whenever, however I can. Yeah, and Sambuka, I don't blame you for not understanding fully. I can't really explain anything because if I do, again, people will use it to hurt me. Um... But financially, I'm not okay. If I were okay, if I were financially good, would I be here full-time six days a week streaming? Or would I spend more time with my family, right? Uh, I have to be here. I have to be here. Not that I say I don't love it. I do. But I have to be here as much as I am in order to make ends meet. It sucks, but that's just my reality. I'll be honest with you guys. Next year coming up, I need to do well on streams and not have any kind of financial crises happen. And if I could maintain that for like six months, I may be in a much better position than I am right now. But I need to do that. I need to have a good end of the year, all right, where I do I make good money. I can pay my taxes and do all that shit. I need to head into the, the beginning of the next year strong and just have consistent performance without any fucking financial disasters. And if I do, I'm actually going to be in a much better position. But I need to get through that, and I don't know what's going to happen, okay? <clears throat> all right, guys. Uh, I got to get going. Thanks for hanging out with Jesus. You want to fucking feign distress anymore at the end, Phil? Yo, I have to be here six days a week and rah, 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 rah. Fuck you, man. No, you don't. Tell your wife to get a fucking job and maybe you want to be there six days a week. Lying piece of shit. Going back all the way to the beginning. Fucking just salt. All I can taste is salt. And we don't know what fucking responsibility is because he owns a cat. <laughs> Can't make this shit up, man. There's little fucking kids. My niece owns a fucking pet, you idiot. She's like seven. She's so fucking dumb. Then at the end of the rant, he immediately just glares at the chat to find someone that laughed so he can ban him. Salt, man. All I can taste is salt. 
What kind of fucking person do you have to be to do that? To go on a rant like that and immediately just stare at the fucking monitor looking for someone to ban, looking for someone that just laughed. And then send me an apology email. Oh, he told somebody to send an apology email because they asked if they can be unbanned. And this is a direct quote. You can't keep begging on stream. It ain't gonna happen. Mother fucker. When's the last time you looked in the mirror, buddy? You can't keep begging on stream. It ain't gonna happen. Well, gee, Phil, I wonder who he learned it from. Fucking idiot. And then this piece of shit Sambuca tips $10. You're lucky you weren't included in this series, bitch. Fuck, boy. Consider yourself lucky. I just didn't take the time to include you. Because I did look you up a couple of times. Piece of shit. Then at the end, of course, just... There's the old Phil fucking tagline. Just feigning distress. Oh, maybe next year. Maybe next year. What's the next hurdle? DSP. This shocks me. Next one's a clip. Let's go. But then they went back on it anyway, so I, I, I'm going to end up keeping it. Smelly gray shirt tipped me a dollar and said most content creators like myself use YouTube studios and only upload our one highly edited video daily. It's made for users like us, not video spammers like you. Yes, video spammers. Yes, because people want a four hour unedited video gameplay video. Sure they do. No, they don't. And the, the fact of the matter is that when you have people who rely on something that's always worked to keep working and you change it and you fuck over those people, that completely isolates a certain user base and customer base that you have. And that's exactly what YouTube has done over and over and over over the years. They just feel, oh, this is better than this without justification, without actual, like, asking. They just say, oh, fuck it, you know. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to change absolutely fucking everything because we can. Not because we should, but because we can. Some upper manager, half the time I guarantee it's that Susan, whatever her name is, who's the, this head of, of, of YouTube, the CEO or whatever, making a sw Oh, I've decided that today YouTube's going to be this and we're changing everything now. Even though for the past five years it's been okay for people to do it this way, today we change our minds and we fuck another group of users over. It's like, why do you think people don't like you? Why? Like, are you dumb? Why would you not think that people don't like you? Because that's how you act. You act like a bunch of elitist douchebag pricks who think they know better than everyone else. They don't ask if something will actually hurt anyone. They just do the sweeping change. So, of course, people don't fucking like you. <laughs> okay. Now someone who's named Frenolith, who, by the way, is not the same Frenolith as before because they didn't spell the name correctly... Tip me a dollar and said, charging back, FYI. So this is the thing that happens when people actually tip me. They can impersonate other people. I know Frenolith wouldn't charge back on a tip. So even though you're impersonating them, I know that that's not them. And by the way, if you try to charge back, you will lose. And I will keep your money regardless because I always win. Well, I just died. Yep. You got the drop on me. If you charge back, you will lose. I will keep your money regardless because I always win. And then he immediately gets clapped like the bitch that he is. That is what you call karma right there. When he's lying and spitting bullshit and he immediately gets fucking clapped. I love it. But going back to the beginning of the video. Dude says, YouTube is for people like me, not video spammers like you. Fucking great cheer. Fuck you, DSP. He got you on that one, buddy. And then how dare you talk about Mama Susan that way? You piece of shit. Don't make me send this clip to her. I'm a partner too, asshole. <laughs> and by the way, welcome back to YouTube, buddy. We're glad to have you back here. Talk about Mama Susan like that. And you get the friendlith imposter <laughs> that tips and says, oh, this is a chargeback. I fucking love it. Again, this is your fan base, buddy. Imposters running around. Real dumbasses running around. It just never ends. I love it. But that ending got me, man. He fucking spit that bullshit about always winning chargebacks. And then it came right back to him. And then it really came back to him with Superhound. Fuck you, homeboy. Next one's a clip. Let's a go. But back then, you know, you'd think I was young enough that my body bounced back from it. 
you know. <clears throat> Timo slices. Are you happy? No, not November is over. No, because adults don't fucking pra practice that stupid shit. Mr. Papa Verich here. He says, "Oh yeah, this Minecraft. Did you say you wanted to go back to the librarian farm? Um, I don't know what I want to do. Um, I'm trying to remember who was the top contributor for Minecraft this week. Fuck. Who was the top contributor for Minecraft this week? I'm trying to remember who it was." And what they wanted me to do. I might have to go back and rewatch the stream, honestly, because I can't remember. I seriously can't remember who won and what they requested, if they requested anything. It was Frenolith? You're right. It was Frenolith. You're absolutely right. He was the top cheerer. So I'm absolutely sure it was Frenolith. But I don't know what he requested. Did he even request anything yet? <clears throat> I don't think he did. I don't think by the end of the stream he requested anything, and he hasn't written me and asked for anything yet. So I guess we'll have to see when Frenolith is around. We're going to have to ask him. Um, you know, what's going on with that? Um, and say, you know, do you want something specific in the game or not? You know, what's the deal? So. Announce of time. I've talked about doing charity streams a million times before. I've said, why well, I can't do it? Because the trolls would never allow me to do it. I would love to do a charity stream and the whole thing would be a failure. Because all that would happen is people would constantly disrupt it and try to attack me the whole fucking time. Um, in addition to that, I can't take time off of work to do it. I'm in a financial position that's so bad that I have to be here to work all the time. If I take even one to two days off, I'm actually shooting myself financially in the foot by doing it and putting myself into a worse position. I would love to do a charity stream tomorrow, and I, I would not be able to pay my bills if I did that. It just sucks. That's the situation I'm in. <clears throat> How do you fucking live, man? How do you live like that? You can't take one day off of your job of playing video games to do fucking charity for somebody else because it's gonna screw you you can't pay your bills if you take one day off of your video game play day to do charity for somebody else man it's gonna fuck you on your bills All right. this dude's such an addict man that's a great fucking cheer though that charity stream such good bait because it hurts him because it's true. It's not because of financial and bills. It's because he's a piece of shit. He doesn't care about anybody else but himself. And he's not going to help anybody else. Going back to the beginning of the, of the clip. <laughs> hey, Timbo, where you been, buddy? And yes, Timbo and DSP are concerned about No Nut November. It's probably closer to No Nut the last 10 years for both of these fucks. And I took it easy... You Kind of on you, Timbo, when I included you in the series, but come on, dude. We all saw it. Get the fuck out of here. And then Mr. Papa Vera cheers. Hey, where you been, buddy? You too, fucking piece of shit. And then somebody has to remind him who the top contributor was for Minecraft and for these scam streams that he does, auction streams. He can't even remember who the top contributor was. People are paying your fucking salary, homeboy. And you can't even remember, oh, who was the chair last week? Who gave me all that money? Well, here's a fucking hint. It was Frenolith. Dipshit. Next one's a clip. Let's go. Frenolith, no. He says, shouldn't Chill Gaming be on a chill night stream? We did chill night streams for a while. Right now they're on hiatus because there's too much new release stuff going on. This is an exception where I'm trying to finish this game today. That's why we're doing this as the main gameplay stream. It's an exception to the rule. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Smurfs. Chill streams are the best streams in my humble opinion. I I like chill streams, but I also like main release, good, big release streams with hype behind them. I like variety. That's what I like about my streams. It's not the same thing every day. It's totally different every single day. So... By the way, my hair is sticking straight up today. The reason being, I washed my hair last night right before I went to sleep. So for some reason, it's very volumetric. And I, uh... It's very volumetric. And I didn't feel like wetting my hair today. So it's going to be very puffy. There's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> Jackie Spruce says, Outer Worlds is pretty chill too. I agree. I think there's more story development in Outer Worlds though. Call of Duty shoes are the best, just vote Democrat. Alright, that's your opinion. 
Hey, vote Democrat. Where you been, you piece of shit? <laughs> and then this fucking picture here. I can't remember who... I want to say I saw it on an Ann Leet stream, but I don't know who took the picture or who edited it. Fucking beautiful. And the thing that gets me the most on this one is he has the fucking fork upside down. How does that even happen? How are you such a pig? Stuff in your fucking face and the fork ends up upside down. What the fuck, man? But God bless whoever took this picture and put this up. This is a good one. But yeah, going back to the beginning of it. <sighs> Friend of Lit says, oh, chill streams are good. And hey, Phil... There's no difference between your chill night streams and your dumbass regular streams. They're the same thing. Then all of a sudden he's concerned about his direct quote, by the way. Volumetric hair. You fucking rolled out of bed like that. What are you talking about? You clearly don't give... Look at this picture. You clearly don't give a shit about your appearance, buddy. So I think your volumetric hair is the least of your concerns. Fucking goblin. This thumbnail. Next one's a clip. Let's uh, go. Uh, just whatever he wants. So think about what you want, and he'll be here next week to let me know. And we'll do it. We'll work on it. That'll be a big portion of our big stream. Wait a minute, Frenolith. Frenolith just tipped thirty dollars and one cent. And Frenolith, I've already said I can't do what you requested. You got to think of something else. That's disgusting. I said I'm not doing gross stuff, and that's fucking gross. It'll probably get me in trouble on Twitch, and I'm not doing that. So you gotta think of something reasonable and not disgusting. What you just requested is absolutely disgusting. And it's not happening. I already said that. It's not happening. Uh, actually, in fact, I talked about that a couple of weeks ago. And someone asked, oh, could we do that? I was like, no. We're not doing that. That's absolutely revolting. So. Thank you for the top contribution. You beat top contribution by a penny. Okay. Wait a minute! Oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. Phillips Smelly Chair just did a 4,000 bit cheer to become the top contribution of the night. Oh my god, okay. That's it, that's the top contribution. Phillips Smelly Chair just came in and took it. And that's it. Oh, Handicap Gaming ER did a 100 bit cheer, said, so Do you need a 20? I don't know what that means, but no, I don't need a 20. But, uh, that's it. It looks like Philip Smelly Chair just trumped everybody and became the top contrib contributor for the night. And it looks like I gotta go to sleep in the game and then we're out of time for the night. Yeah. So this is it. I'm gonna go to sleep. If nothing changes by the time I go to sleep, but when I go to sleep, I'll save the game. That's the end of my stream for tonight. So this is it. Right now, Philip Smelly Chair is in the lead. And hey, Philip Smelly Chair, think about what you want for next week. Because right now you're the top contributor. And unless a miracle happens, you probably still will be in just a minute. All right, here we go. Here we go. Wait, don't end. Wait, don't end. Henny can't give me. You guys tell me not to end, dude. This is it. This is it. I gotta get to sleep. Look, it's getting dark. It's getting dark, and the moon is coming up. Handicap Gamer in ER did 100 bit cheers, so don't end it. I have to. I have to go. I told you I can't be here all night. Phil Smelly Chair said, after you put the glass in, yeah, but I gotta go to sleep. So, all right. Going to sleep. Daytime, that's it. Save the game. And the game is saved. And that's it. You didn't beat him, so Philip Smelly Chair ended up being the top contributor of the night. They, you know, even, I, I apologize if someone was trying to I told you guys I can't stay here all freaking night. I told you that, okay? So, <clears throat> all right. So, Philip Smelly Chair, think about what you want. So fucking disgusting, man. So fucking disgusting. I mean, he knows that bullshit's a scam. He knows that there's, like, fucking... Childlike people watching him, legit mentally handicapped, mentally unstable people watching him, and he's playing these games with them, man. It's so fucking disgusting. It makes me think of someone like Rob, just sitting there, Rob on wheels, just sitting there, 
And DSP's doing this bullshit, man. I know I shouldn't get pissed off, but it fucking pisses me off. And like you tell everybody else, you're going to get yours in the end, motherfucker. I, I can't wait for it. You're going to fucking get yours in the end. But yeah, it's just a fucking scam. Then at the beginning, that dumbass friend of Lith cheered and said he wanted a cobble cock with the lava flow. Again, this is your fan base, Philip. And Phil shits on the idea and he takes his money anyways. I love that part. Take the money from the dumbass. What is, what's the saying? A, a fool and their money are easily parted or something like that? Beautiful. But yeah, just scamming, playing with people, knows what he's doing. Disgusting, man. Fuck you. Graphics of the GameCube a lot, so... Friend of to me another dollar. So what's the deal with the retrospective? Are we still going to have it this month? Yeah, it's on the, uh, one week from yesterday. So it's Sunday, the third, the excuse me, the 29th of September is the retrospective. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a marathon where I do it all day. I'm hoping to raise a good amount of funds that day to help with the coming month. I really need the help this coming month. I'm very afraid. So we'll see um, how that goes, but that's what's going to happen. All right. So it looks to me like I need to put torches in there. But I can't tell where. Yeah, I need to put torches in there? No, those are torches. What are those? Mr. Papa Vera, I think you forgot a step. Because in the picture you sent, it's showing... Above there, see those? It looks like there's switches installed. And I don't know what those are. Those button switches. What are those? You didn't explain it in the picture. Unless you're going to have me do that later. But it was already in this picture. So it's confusing me. Oh, never mind. You have a picture coming up later that explains it. Never mind. You sh you you already you kind of jumped the gun. You showed a picture of the buttons already installed before I had installed them. But it looks like you explain it in a later picture. So never mind. That's, that's okay. Alright, so now... Now I basically just need to close this off, I believe. No! Gee, Phil. Thought you couldn't show your phone because some personal information might leak and the fucking trolls might get something and take it and run with it. At least that's what you said about WWE champions and you seem to show your fucking phone there. It didn't bother you there at all. Piece of shit. You fucking scumbag, man. Then at the end, he blames Papa Vera. Meanwhile, he can't even read the fucking instructions correctly. How is that Papa Vera's fault? No wonder he fucking left. But going back to the beginning of it. Direct quote. I really need the help this coming month. I'm very afraid. Unquote. Gee, Phil, where have we heard this before? Like fucking last night, maybe? Begging for tips? Which reminds me. Motherfucker got a $117 tip on the day stream and he was still acting like a crackhead last night begging for tips, telling people to stop super chatting. Send it in tips because he really needs it. Then we go back to this clip from last year. I really need help this coming month. I'm very afraid. Makes me think back to last month when he was trying to hit that member's goal so he could hold a marathon like two or three days later. Back when he was on Twitch, this motherfucker was backlogged for these subscriber and viewer choice events for like months, man. But oh, I, I need it now, so I wanted to ha have the marathon, guys, for you. Because we hit the members goal and I wanted to do the marathon in two or three days. Fuck you, man. Scumbag, dude. Whatever, man. Next one's a clip. Let's fucking go. What's this? You want a, you want a cave shortcut or something? Probably. Alright, Frenel, it just took me five dollars. What's up, Dark Side Philanthropy? How you doing? I see you got Borderlands 3. I guess someone gave you the credits for it. Yeah, it was actually a combination of three different viewers who helped me out to get it. So thank you to those people yet again. Um Is it what is the tentative day for the retrospective? I don't know yet. It's definitely gonna be near by the end of the month. I don't know exactly when yet, so let's go meet up with Firehawk. So thank you, Frenel, for the five dollar tip. Won't stop until every bandit on Pandora worships them like gods. What did I just fucking say? 
Oh, the retrospective event uh, at the end of the month, next month, who cares? And this dumbass friend of lit. Oh, it looks like you got Borderlands. Oh, somebody give you the credits for it? Yeah, three different viewers gave him credits to purchase this shit. How does he have fucking money problems at all, man? And I bet he still claims these games and fucking items on his taxes, double dipping. Uncle Sam's gonna catch you eventually. Mama Susan's gonna get you. Uncle Sam's gonna... We're gonna have a family reunion at some point. And fucking pig is gonna be on the menu, bitch. Now I'm having fun! Nice. Whoa, well, holy shit, Mark Zuckerberg just tipped me a hundred dollars. Well, thank you, Mark Zuckerberg, owner of Facebook, which I hate. And I've always said it's a piece of garbage. Mark Zuckerberg is coming here tonight. Uh, okay, he tipped me a hundred dollars. Thank you very much for that, man. Woo! Well, I'm being very supportive in the game as Jack, and that was a very, very, very supportive tip. So thank you very much, Mark Zuckerberg. Appreciate that. Whoever that really was, thank you very much. Yes, that's right. Friend of the list says, how about Jasper's name tattooed in a heart with an arrow through it on my right butt cheek? <laughs> no, I'd probably get my wife's name tattooed on my body before I would get my cat's name tattooed on my body. I'm just saying. Fucking disgusting. Beyond disgusting. Having said that, we might need a full cavity body check to find this fucking tattoo. Somebody get the three-letter bitch on the line and get your punk ass over here and do your job. I almost wanted to call him something else there, too. <laughs> I had to fucking hold off. Jesus. Going back to the beginning of the clip. Oh, Mark Zuckerberg tips me $100, uh, owner of Facebook, which I hate. There's the king of hate coming back out. I thought you did. I thought that's not why they called you the king of hate, buddy. What happened? But who are these fucking people, man, that can tip a hundred dollars to this scumbag under some fake ass name? Who are these fucking people? What type of losers do they have to be, man? It's, it's incredible. It's fucking, this is also part of the reason why you can't look away. It's like a car crash, a train wreck, whatever you want to call it. But then it's these fuckers too, man. Who are these people? Oh, let me tip a hundred dollars to this Piece of trash under the name Mark Zuckerberg. Unreal, man. Frenolith saying that maybe he had, he might have dealt with the same company Goodbye, I dealt with me. with this whole exercise bike debacle. I doubt it. They're only this company itself is a division of a bigger shipping company, but this this particular company only works in the Seattle area and like Anchorage, Alaska, and that's it. So unless you live here, you probably I haven't dealt with this company before. Hurt. Clay said he was working with some serious muscle. I'm in a secure location overlooking a dock full of COV. Need some help clearing him out. That was a fucking redneck at the end there. Jesus, man. But yeah, the old exercise bike debacle. Whatever happened there, buddy? He ordered an exercise bike for Ket on her birthday. Didn't his parents pay for it too? And it came broke in and he couldn't put it together. Let's be fucking real. The guy that doesn't own one tool couldn't put together the exercise bike. Or he put it together and it came out fucked up. So he complained and carried his way into a refund and credits. And he probably used some of those credits for himself, but that's my own speculation. But you get Frenolith here, who sounds like a certain three-letter bitch, if you ask me. Wants to tie himself to DSP in any way possible. Oh, I think I also had a run-in with that uh, exercise bike company and blah, blah, blah. I don't think you did, buddy, unless you were in the Seattle area like a certain three-letter bitch that we happen to know. Makes you think, huh? Makes you fucking think. Pete GRL says it was a great interview. I agree. Green Jenny says, I'd understand if you might not want any more interviews since that one was unplanned, but I would love to see more fair interviews with you in the future. What I would like, and this is me being honest, I'm okay talking about me, but I would like people to like talk to me about other stuff. Like I've been on YouTube for 11 years. I've been a content creator for 11 years. I've been a full-time streamer on Twitch for two and a half years. I feel like I have insights to certain things. I've been a, I was a competitive fighting game player for most of my life. 
tap that. I have that knowledge, but sadly what I have to say is since I became the lol cow of the internet, or one of the lol cows of the internet, people just don't care about my, my opinions or expertise anymore. Like, they just ignore it like none of it's valid just because people like to make fun of me. I feel that I have, like, significant knowledge to help people and, 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 and chime in on certain uh, subjects that people just kind of ignore. I would love to talk about certain things, you know what I mean? Um, but... That's up to people, you know, to, to decide if they want to talk to me or not. And if they don't, that's fine. You know, I listen, I'm a busy dude. I got gameplay streams to do. I got people to interact with. I got boo figurines to get in claw games. And uh, I completely missed. <laughs> Maybe I don't have boo figurines to get in claw games. All right, anyway. <clears throat> Green Jenny says, that's a great idea. You, you really are an unmined or of YouTube history and fighting game history, so it would be interesting to see that. I've only been on YouTube for 11 years, using it actively every single day. I think I have something to add, at least. Well, holy crap, Frenolith just tipped me $75. Wow, thank you, Frenolith. That is super generous of you, man. He says, the quartering interview was good stuff. Dude, it's amazing how many of these idiots try to dehumanize you and break you down to these base instincts. The reality is your answers show you have an intelligence quotient well above the average detractor. Well, thank you for that. I'm glad you feel that way. I'm happy that I came off well in the interview. The one thing I have to say negative about the interview, did you notice the first half of the interview, I looked like shit on Skype? For some reason, like, I looked terrible. It was all, like, pixelated and terrible. And then halfway through the interview, it cleared up. I was like... I don't even know why that is. I guess there was something wrong with the internet in this area or something at that time. I looked shitty and then it cleared itself up, but oh well. CM Fool to me, $5 said, how about you play the quiet? Yeah, fuck off, CM Fool. I handled you a long time ago, bitch. Get out of here. But yes, Phil. It was because of Skype that you looked terrible. And I took this picture here for a reason, because it's as he's saying, oh, I looked terrible because of Skype and blah, blah, blah. I don't think it was Skype, buddy. I think you got some bigger fucking issues going on there, my friend. But then back to the beginning. The quartering interview was really good and it was really got a lot of details. I mean, I mother can I get some X's in the fucking chat to doubt on that one? We don't believe you, Abay Bay. Then he called himself one of the law cows of the internet. And Friendlith kissed his ass on the fucking oh, the way they dehumanized. What did de dehumanize you and all the trolls and this and that? Kissing his ass the same way a certain three-letter bitch that we all know would do. Hmm, makes you think, doesn't it? But yeah, just enjoy this picture here because you looked good, DSP. I'll just fucking say it. You looked good in that interview, blah, blah, blah. You look good here in this picture. You got nothing to worry about, buddy. You're looking good for, what are you, about 19, 20 years old here? Fucking idiot. Now, oh, you know what? Next one's going to be the last one on Friend Lith, and it's a four-minute clip, so get your uh, snacks and drinks ready for the pre-stream. We're going to be here a while, but also wanted to say that uh, if you want to look into Friend Lith further, I believe it's Mr. Huth stuff. I'll uh, link the video if I can remember to in the comments. He has like a 40-minute video on Friend Lith from a couple of years ago of just the stupidest shit he would say. That's probably the closest thing to the to, to catch a pay pig that I'd ever seen. I didn't start the series because of that, but I do remember that video. It was on front of lit and it was really good. So shout out to Mr. Huss stuff, an OG. And again, if I can remember, I'll link that video. And if you're interested in front of lit more, you can watch it. Next one's the last one on them. And it's a damn good one. Let's fucking go. People just fucking with me. Um... So I stopped being so upfront, and you know, a lot of people this year uh, have given me shit because I had a trip to Connecticut where I went to see my parents who were getting old, and they literally said this might be the last time you see us, depending on how our health goes. And while we, I was there, I got married because my parents wanted to see me get married before things went south with their health. So I got married, and I didn't tell anyone I was getting married when I was going out there because I was afraid that if I did, people would use that as a way to, to attack my family. Try, I mean, they've done some fucked up stuff, so imagine if they like tried to fucking swat my parents' house or something, right? So, I purposely didn't share that information, and I've been taking so much shit because I wasn't upfront and transparent with people about it. And it's like, you gotta understand there's a line you gotta draw, right? Like, you have to be, you have to protect your family, you have to do things the right way. 
and just because I hid something and I wasn't 100% transparent about stuff doesn't mean that like I didn't want to share it or that I was trying to be dishonest. Is I had people I when I used to be 100% transparent, people hurt me. So now I have to be careful about what I share, you know. Um, but outside of that, like I'm very matter of fact about everything, and I'm very upfront, and I know bullshit. You know what I mean? So yeah, in that regard. I do feel that, like, you know, there's really nothing hidden about me in my life or anything. I'm not keeping secrets behind, you know, everyone, oh, Phil lies about everything all the time, and he has all these secret shakes going on. It's, it couldn't be further from the truth. Well, holy shit, Frenolith just sent me $100. Thank you very much, Frenolith. Wow, thank you super much, man. That's gonna help a lot. And he says, fuck that, bro. We're ride or die. If you aren't streaming at 80 years old, we fucking riot. I really don't think anyone's gonna care about me when I'm 80. Right now, people still care, because... New games, getting my opinion on new games, fighting games, they still, they're still in on it. You know what I mean? They still like the stuff I'm putting out. But I'm going to become a, a relic. You know what I mean? Eventually, people aren't going to care about the, the older guy. People always jump on, the, what's the new hotness? Who's the new fad, the new streamer? Who's the big one and everyone tunes into, right? And that's what it's going to be. I, I realize people aren't going to care about this forever. I know that. And that's why eventually I know I'm going to have to phase out of it and do other stuff with my life and that's what I'm trying to do but it's gonna take a long time what the fuck is going on why is everyone honking Jesus Christ all right let me open the leaderboard hold on you can't take it <laughs> good god man thank you for the hundred dollar tip super appreciated man thank you so much um as you know, with my situation, that's going straight to my bank account to try to get it back into the into the black today. Thank you for that. Um, Survive Sweet Treat Shoot again. He says, I think you would be an asset to the sponsored gaming community. Everyone else feigns positivity. And I. the problem is, I can't. I can never be part of the sponsored gaming community because of those people who I mentioned who hate me and who hurt me all the time. <clears throat> The moment that I found out that they find out that I'm something with sponsorship, they attack the sponsor. This has happened with gaming chairs. This has happened with uh, Loot Crate. This has happened with games that I played on sponsored streams on Twitch. To the point where they harassed the shit out of two game developers. And now I don't, I don't even get offered the sponsored opportunities. They kicked me out. They didn't, not that they kicked me out of the program. They don't offer them to me. Basically, they made me ineligible for all opportunities because they don't want game developers to get harassed on social media just because I'm playing their game in a sponsorship opportunity. So, it sucks. Survive Street Treat Shit again. He says, I know scumbags. I own a mirror. You're not a scumbag. Okay, then. Haseo X4 uh, did a 400-bit cheer. and said, it may not be much, but I hope it helps you out. Thank you, Haseo X. You are the top cheer of the day, and that indeed does help. So, thank you. Thank you for the 400-bit cheer. Appreciate that very much. Yes, you dumbass. That $4 in a month and a half is really going to help him. Didn't you hear what he said last night? Stop super chatting and stop cheering and give him fucking tips. He really needs the help right now. Really, really this time. For real this time. For real. He's being for real. But so much in that fucking clip, man. Back to the beginning. He didn't get married because he was in love with his soulmate. He got married because his parents wanted to see him get married. Jesus, man. Sounds like a shitty-ass marriage, if you ask me. Then all the convenient lies start coming out. He has to lie, guys. He has to. He's, he's usually upfront and honest with his viewers, but only when he has to lie. So, don't worry about that. Then he parks in the middle of the fucking street just so he can rant. <laughs> he can't understand why people are honking. And he's just parked there. And then this is a direct quote. I'm very matter-of-fact about everything. Very upfront and no bullshit. Unquote. And he just admitted to probably the biggest lie he's ever told in his life. The wedding and all that shit. Outside of his mobile game lie, obviously. But he's very upfront and matter-of-fact. No bullshit. He just finished lying to you. And then Frenolith comes in and says, We're ride or die for you. If you're not streaming at 80, we're going to ride. He ain't going to see 80, motherfucker. And you clearly don't know the definition of ride or die. You dumb fuck. Unless you're that three-letter bitch, then maybe you do know what it is. But you don't know the definition of ride or die, motherfucker. Where are you at now, buddy? And then he parks and he loses his shit because 
everybody's honking and he can't figure out why they're honking. They're honking because you were lying, asshole. You were just lying and lying and they knew it and they were honking and honking. Nobody else can get a hold of you. Nobody else can get to you. So in these games, when you lie, you get fucking clapped. They honk. They throw up the X's like we do. It's bullshit. And almost on cue, friendly tips $100 and this tip's going straight to my bank account to get it back into the black. That's a direct quote. Unreal, man. Then some dumbass cheers and says, other video game players feign positivity and you don't... He feigns distress. How many times do I gotta fucking say this? He feigns distress. He don't feign positivity. Well, actually, he does do that too. But he feigns distress, man. Worse than probably anybody I've ever seen. This guy shits on everybody and everything, but he blames the trolls for not having sponsors. Nobody wants to work with them. Nobody wants to do anything because of the trolls, because of all of us. It's not because of that fake positivity and his begging and his bank accounts always in the, in the red and chargebacks and he's going to lose his house. And he, he's very matter of fact, except when he has to lie. None of that shit. It's because of us. And because of people like Friendlith who are ride or die, except for when he needs them. That's how we end with Friendlith. Now we move on to part two. Oh, the lovely Ket Burnell makes her second and final appearance in the series. And I included her because this is my middle finger straight at you, Dave. I told you don't ignore it. I told you don't pretend it didn't happen. I told you not to fucking ban people after your three-letter bitch tried to dox me and you did it anyways. So this is my middle finger up to you. Let's see what the very lovely Ket Burnell has to say. I did a Thanksgiving Day special podcast and I announced this problem to my viewing audience on Thanksgiving Day 2017. You can go back and watch it. It's still live over on my vlogging channel, The King of Hate Vlogs. All right. Now, during 2017 was the year when early in the year I broke up with my ex and I started talking to and then dating my now wife, Kat. Okay. Now, Kat didn't live around here. And she had to visit me a couple times. I had to take time away from streaming and stuff to spend time with her. I didn't disclose that that was happening because I knew if I did, people would be trying to get up in our private shit. All right. But what people say to this day, Phil raised all that money for the taxes so he could secretly fly his new girlfriend across the country to spend time with him. Now let's look at the timeline. Hmm. Well, the first time that Kat came to visit me was the summer of 2017. The second time she came to visit me was the fall, which I believe was October of 2017, because she actually helped me pick out my Halloween costume for the Halloween special that I did that year. I announced my financial dilemma about the state taxes in Thanksgiving of 2017. So obviously what Phil did is he announced it so he could raise funds, go back in time, and pay for the two visits beforehand. You fucking dumbasses. You, you talk out of your fucking asses about this stuff and make the most crazy, controversial, insane theories that make no fucking sense. It's such a weird conspiracy. Like, how the fuck do you think that money that I talked about and raised later in the year paid for the trips that happened earlier, you fucking buffoons? It just doesn't make any sense. Now, the bottom line is this. If I had raised money for, well, no, I, I said that wrong. The truth of the matter was that if I didn't raise enough money to get out of this state tax situation, I didn't know how I was going to pay the state taxes. And because of that, I was afraid the state would either put a lien on my home or I didn't know how much it was going to be that I owed the state at that point. And I was thinking tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars. I had no idea. And I was thinking I might have to sell my house. All right. So I actually told Kat at that point, I don't even know if we can plan our next trip. I don't know when's the next time I can see you. You know, this really sucks because I obviously, I, you know, at that point, we had been dating for months. I spent a lot of time with her and we, it was working out. We wanted to advance to the next stage of our relationship and we couldn't because I didn't know what the fuck was going to happen with all these taxes and everything. I had no clue what was going to happen with taxes and all that stuff. Um, So our life was on hold. Now, thank God, hallelujah, you know, and I'm so grateful that you guys and gals and fans 
helped me out and raised enough money so that I paid off the state taxes. I was able to handle it. And because of that, Kat was able to move in with me in early 2018. But if I didn't raise the money to pay off those state taxes, I probably would have said our, our relationship's kind of on hold until we figure this stuff out. Oh shit, you guys are right. Where's my wedding ring? I was in the shower and I didn't put it back on. Now I feel really bad. You guys, you, you know what? If you guys ever see me without my wedding ring on, you call me out on it because that's supposed to be on my fucking finger all the time. And now I feel really bad because I left it in the bathroom. I'm going to be right back. I'm going to get it right now. <laughs> It's almost like fucking karma right at the end there too. It's fucking karma, man. He's lying and look what happens immediately. Bullshit, man. Let's go all the way back to the beginning. And Phil, I thought the world wasn't black and white, buddy. Why are you trying to lock the narrative into you use the tax fundraiser money to fly her in? Doesn't work like that, man. You clearly spent money flying her in and having multiple staycations. Do you know how much round trip tickets across the country are, man? Seriously. And do you really think this dipshit flew her in on the red eye like on a Tuesday to fucking save money? The relationship was brand new. He was clearly simping for her and on the fucking rebound. I've been there, man. So, you know, there's no bullshit there. I've been there. I know what he was doing. You wine and dine the female in the beginning. It, it, that's how it is, buddy. It's not McDonald's and shit. You wine and dine in the beginning. Especially when you're simping. That shit gets expensive. But he memory holds all that. And he debunks everything. Because the trolls say he used the fundraiser money for all of it. So it, nothing else matters. It's such bullshit. You see how he does this shit, man? Oh, the world's not black and white. Except when he needs it to be. And by the way, asshole, you probably wouldn't have had to do a Save the House fundraiser if you didn't waste a bunch of money on this bitch. I wonder why you won't do an interview with someone like Rich or someone like myself, for fuck's sakes. And then in there, I don't know if you caught this or not, he started to lie and then he pulled it back and immediately fucking direct quote says, well, the truth of the matter is this, unquote. That looks exactly and sounds exactly like what a fucking used car salesman does, man. Go back and watch it if you need to. He, he starts to say something and he realizes he fucked up saying it. Or oh, I, I shouldn't say it like that. And he pulls it back and then it says the truth of the matter is. That's a used car salesman tactic. So much in that fucking clip. We might have to go over that one once I start doing videos. So let's move on to the next one and... I have a special surprise, a person making their second guest appearance ever in the series. And well, let's see who we got. And I find other pictures up on the internet. This happened in 20 minutes. So there you go, internet has been scoured. You guys change your schedule. So you guys spend time together every day on like what happened in your last relationship. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. What we're doing is we're taking one day off a week. That's 100% for us. He's talking about my girlfriend, by the way. Um, one day a week for sure will be 100% for us to do stuff together. And keep in mind, we're going to see each other in the morning. We're going to see each other around dinner time. We're going to see each other after. It's just the fact that, you know, when I'm streaming. This is great to call us a girl from Redemption Run. Because all of his Redemption Runs this year have been worse than the original playthroughs. He doing the same thing he did with Panda Lee. When he was, remember, you might not remember. But towards the end of the relationship with Panda Lee, DSP did a big old video. Shit was like an hour long. And one of the main announcements from the video was that he's going to take a whole day off once a week scheduled around when Panda Lee was off from her job so they could spend time together. Guess what that really meant? They just did fucking errands. This this is going to be. He's saying it like they're going to have a whole day together and they're going to do errands some other day. No, that's going to be the errand day. That's going to be the day he take her to Fred Meyer and Target and they buy fucking eggs and shit. And then they're going to come home and watch movies. And then he's going to wake up the next day and stream. And then he's going to see her after he's done streaming and eat. And then he's going to go back to streaming. And then he's going to be done and she's going to be asleep. He's going to do this girl the same way he did Panda Lee. And the thing about Panda Lee was, when he first got with her, she didn't have a job for like a year and a half or something. So he was forced to spend time with her when 
he wasn't streaming. Obviously, the dude not going to stream 15, 16 hours a day. But when she got a regular job, it's it turned into seeing each other all all day, or at least a lot, to not at all. And then she was out of there. I don't know what this girl think this is going to turn into. All right. You've heard of Nostradamus. Well, now I introdu introduce you to Nostra Tevanonymous. So, and also obviously praise be prayer hands, please again in the chat for Tevin making his second appearance ever in the series. Thank you for that. Very kind of you to phone in from Twitch to make an appearance. Only nine tabs this time. That's a, I counted them again. That's an improvement from you. I'm very proud of you, Kevin. You're doing much better. So we're going to take a look at the next clip. Remember everything that Kevin said there. Let's see how Nostra Tevanonymous's predictions worked out. Let's uh, go. Things that I miss out on, right? Oh, uh, and by the way, I'm not saying that Danganronpa V3 is a bad game, and I'm not saying that I haven't enjoyed playing it. But you have to understand that I am a one man with, a, you know, a, a busy schedule. I stream as much as I possibly can right now. In fact, I was actually just talking to my wife recently about, man, it would be nice if we could have two days together a week. That way we could have one day to go out and do all our errands and appointments and another day to stay home together, maybe do stuff around the house and have more private personal time rather than being out all day. We don't have, we have one day a week to spend with each other. That's it. My wife, it's crazy. I live with a woman full time. I married her and I see her one day a week. <laughs> Think about that, right? So that's what I'm saying here is, we have to find the perfect balance. Right now, there is no perfect balance. Because some people want this, some people want this, some people will be upset if I drop this because they asked for it, but then when I drop something because people tell me to drop it, I get yelled at too. That's exactly what happened with Divinity 2. Divinity 2 is viewer's choice. People asked for it, I played it 60 hours. And at the end of 60 hours, people literally said, stop playing it. Phil, stop playing the game. It's not entertaining anymore. You're obviously not enjoying yourself. It's too much of a time investment to beat it. You're going to be playing another 60 hours. It'll take till the end of the year. Just forget it. So I did. And now every day you get idiots coming in here. Ugh, why didn't you jump Divinity 2? Because you fucking told me to. I can't do everything. I can't. I can't play every game. I can't do every possible thing. I would love to cover more indie games. Under Game Pass particularly. Then stop asking for 80 hour playthroughs. Because then I'll get to the indie games. But I need the time to do so. You see? So, <laughs> again, I am a man of, of the people. I will give you what you want. But you have to be concise and clear about what you want. And I'm not getting a resounding answer to what people want. You would think that when people have a month to nominate and then vote on a game for a viewer's choice playthrough, that game that wins would be the game that resoundingly you guys want but apparently you're telling me that's not the case then what do i do you know what i mean like i don't know what you expect me to do because there's not much i could do about that i am i'm putting the power in your hands and if the game that wins isn't the game you wanted like what happened there there's obviously a disconnect that people didn't want to i am a man of the people was a direct quote that this motherfucker used I am a man of the people. And a lot of people told you to quit Divinity. And it's funny because a lot of people are asking you to still play Divinity. What the fuck? How are you a man of the people then? Lying piece of shit. And he blames everyone else. Uh, well, you're not telling me. I mean, fuck, you need to all tell me in unison. And this motherfucker, that's what polls are for. And you don't even honor the fucking results of the polls anyways. Dipshit. But let's jump back to the beginning. Praise be again to Nostra Tev Anonymous. Because he called that shit almost to a T. Your one day a week that you have with your wife. And even then you barely have any time to spend with her and blah blah blah. Sounds like a shitty ass marriage if you ask me. Just to be honest with you. But Tevin called that shit perfectly. This is terrible dude. This is terrible. I hope this is one of those cases where you're lying just for the sake of lying and you don't want to reveal the information. Because if you're treating her like that, whatever, dude, whatever. Let's move on to the next one. And I have a feeling Tevin might make another appearance before the episode is over. Maybe, maybe. 
But let's see what the next clip is. Phil here puts the seat down when he does number one. There you go. Okay. Kate cheered and said, hi, cats. Nice to meet another cat on the stream. Yeah, she's Kate. Your cat, she's Kate. She's a yeah. regular viewer. And of course, we got a troll. Someone trying to pretend to be my ex-girlfriend. The first troll of the night. So we'll ignore that. <laughs> Shout out to Fallen1570 who just resubbed for the ninth month in a row. Thank you very much. All right, very nice. The trolls will arrive shortly, trust me. Right now, here's what happened, because we were talking about this before we started tonight's stream. So here's what happened. During the pre-stream, you get one, or, you get a handful of them who sit here in the stream idly just listening. Gee, will Phil say something wrong? Can we get him in trouble, right? And then they're like, well, when that stream goes live, we'll start recording. So they went to hit record, and as they were hitting record, they saw Kat, and they went crazy. Oh, I got a message on my friend. Oh, I got to tell everyone to get to the stream. Cats on the stream, cats on the stream. So there you go. They'll be here shortly, I'm sure, if they're not here already. Anyway, so there we go, guys. Everyone's going nuts. Let's see here what people have to say. My hair is sticking straight up. I, I, I brushed it before we started, and now it's just sticking up again. There's nothing I can do about it. Fallen uh, did a 100 bit cheer and asks, How is our night going? I would say our night's going all right. Pretty good, right? yeah. Had a good dinner. You made a new a new kind of dinner tonight. Mm -hmm. Mexican lasagna. Yeah. You might, you might say, what the heck? Why don't you tell everyone what Mexican lasagna is? It wasn't anything that special. I mean, it's just... <laughs> oh, my God. She she's humble. <laughs> she's humble, and she doesn't want to say. So she made this, this... I thought it was weird. It sounded weird to me. But what it is is, like, the ingredients you would think of lasagna, right? Cheese, veggies, sauce, meat... You know, and some kind of starch, only yeah. it's a Mexican ingredient. So instead of, say, for example, using uh, ground beef, you use ground turkey. Instead of yeah. using actual pasta, you use tortillas. Instead of using Italian-style sauce, you use a Mexican-flavored, like, enchilada sauce. You use the, the Mexican-style roasted tomatoes, some uh, peppers, right? Some kind of peppers yeah. were in there. So it, went, it ended up being really good. Like, it was really good. It was filling. And it was oh, actually, wait. Wait, oh, what? They said it's not a real Mexi a Mexican dish. It's not a real Mexican <laughs> dish. It's not. It's not real Mexican. You're right. It's not. Yeah. But Mexicans don't eat lasagna. That's true. You guys are right. It's not a real Mexican it dish. It can't be. There's no way. <laughs> oh. Mexican lasagna. Now, this fucking triggers me badly. Mexican lasagna, huh? Then, oh yeah, this picture. <laughs> Anyways, at the beginning, Kate cheers, and Kate, stay away from her man. Bitch. And Ket does not like the trolls. Feels bad, man. Panda Ree is nice enough to join the stream and actually fucking cheer to say hi, and DSP just calls her a troll, and you can see Ket's reaction to Panda Ree here. She does not like it. Feels bad. And what the fuck was that noise DSP made in the middle of that clip? What the fuck, man? How are you? You're almost 40 and you're still acting like that, dude. In front of your woman, no less. Making stupid noises like that, acting like that. And he keeps fucking fucking with his hair, his hideous ass hair. Bro, you, I told you already, you roll out of bed like that. You ain't fooling nobody. You don't give a fuck. Stop playing with it. Roll out of bed and just put yourself on camera. Mexican lasagna. <laughs> Ugh. Next one's a clip. Less a go. Lost to a squid today. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Yola the opportunity says, I love you, cat. See, people love you. You've only been on the stream Wait, for, you but know. But how, how do I know it's not a troll? Because there's, there's already trolls in there. They're like, oh, you're like making fun of my eyeshadow or something. Of course. Well, that's, that's I don't just care. Not that I, I don't care. It's not like I'm offended. Like, I just don't care. I just think it's stupid. You know? No, Yolo like, Dopper is a stream regular. He's a weirdo, but he's a stream regular. So there you <laughs> go. Uh, Queen Tell Pro did a 25-bit cheer. Thank you, Queen Tell Pro, <laughs> for the 400 cap of faces that you posted in the stream chat along with that cheer. Appreciate that. <clears throat> All right. Look at that. Someone, Anonosaurus Rex says you look like Jennifer Garner. Oh, well, thank you Jennifer for Garner. being nice and yes. saying a nice thing. It's nice to actually hear nice things from people instead of just like, you look like, just like, you know, insults, obviously. Right. So. Johnny Soros Rex cheered. He said, Kaz says he wants to be Kat's friend. Timbo Slice cheered. He says, that sounds amazingly good. 
Ice14, cheers, as I enjoyed your stream a few days back tackling depression. It is such a hot button and issue these days. I recall you talking about it in a pre-stream and said that you didn't have depression anymore. No, that's not true. Never did I say I don't have depression anymore. What it yeah. is, is depression is something that is, it comes and goes. You may be having a great day, and then all of a sudden, wham, you'll get hit by it out of nowhere. And even though there's absolutely no reason to feel bad, you'll feel like shit. So I mean, in particular, probably was, no, I wasn't depressed that day is probably what I was saying. So, But no, depression does not permanently go away, at least in my experience, you know, it's never gone away. So, uh, Jay Kramer Charity says, blink twice if you need rescuing. So there you go, there's the troll troll message. Obviously, you've been, you've been my captive yep. since February, right? What I did is I, I had a lasso and I threw it across the United States. And I lassoed her and I slowly pulled her across the contiguous United States until she arrived in Washington, and wow. she's been tied up in my house since then, obviously. Yep. She's not actually a willing, you know, resident here in the house. Stupidity. Okay. Um, let's see. <sighs> <Okay. here. laughs> Norville Shaggy Rogers, Charity said, What are we going to see you do do co-op? Boy, I screwed that up. I'll say that again. When are we going to see you two do co-op? And I Why would you make that joke? You know people say she looks like a horse. Why would you fucking make that joke, man? Common sense, dude. Come on. Big ups Jay Kramer on the cheer there. I mean, we're not supposed to cheer, but that was pretty funny. Blink twice if, you, if you're being held hostage. Big ups Jay Kramer. He's probably in the premiere. Shout out to you, homie. But yeah, why would you make that fucking joke? And how awkward they look there. When's the next co-op, buddy? When are y'all going to do a co-op together? Jesus, man. And going back to the beginning, Ket, I'm glad you don't care about the trolls and making fun of your appearance and you just don't care. Where you been at, by the way, then? Where you fucking been at? And then, my God, and some of y'all will get this, I don't know. Pro fucking cheers. What the fuck? Pro. <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, it's just so fucking awkward together. And then somebody cheers and says that she looks like Jennifer Garner. Now, I should have looked this up, but isn't, doesn't people say that she has like man features or some shit like that? Or am I thinking about somebody different? I could have sworn I seen like a from the office or something where they're, I think that's Jennifer Garner. They're talking about man features and blah, blah, blah. And then the, probably the gem of this entire section of the video it's blatantly clear this dude has no fucking idea what real depression is. He used that depression scapegoat bullshit he pulled out like a four hour fucking stream or whatever. It, well, maybe not four hours, but he pulled out my depression and for every time he fucks up, he blames it on his depression. And then this motherfucker says, oh, well, it just comes and goes and some days I'm feeling bad and this clearly this dude dude has no idea what depression is clearly and those of you out there that are suffering from depression or have been through it fucking know it, it don't work like that motherfucker dude's just stressed about money issues and his fucking mobile games and how he's gonna beg tonight that ain't fucking depression that's just you having a bad day or being stupid about money God, I wanna fucking <laughs> Not even going to say it. Not even going to say it, man. But just stupid. He doesn't know what depression is. He makes some terrible joke about lassoing her. Maybe that was your depression. Maybe your depression made that fucking joke. Get the fuck out of my face. Next one's a clip. Let's go. The villain X cheered. He says, do you watch Wheat World? I think he meant to say West World and he misspelled it. Oh, I was it. like, what's that? Wheat World? <laughs> yeah, that's the, my favorite show. And they're fucking, they got the chaff. And they're taking the wheat stalks off the top and putting it into the grain barrel. You know, they got your barley, your normal... I love that fucking show, man. I could watch that, you know, on a fucking binge uh... for weeks on end. It's great. No, Westworld I've never seen because isn't Westworld HBO, right? Um... Yeah, it's HBO. It's a I HBO so. show. And yeah. I don't have HBO. I'm not going to pay, you know, it's actually a lot of money. It's like $15 a month or something extra. I think so, yeah. Just for the fucking channel. So mm -hmm. anything that's on HBO, typically I never see... Because I'm not going to pay extra money in order to see it. So, obviously, you have you ever seen Westworld? No, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. so, no. we Sadly, we don't have any opinion on that. Um, or Night Security says, Say, Cat, were you big on other TV shows a few years ago? So, were you ever big on any other shows besides, like, Walking Dead? Were there other shows that you were following on um, television? 
I'm trying to think. Um... I guess not, if nothing's coming to mind, right? You weren't really following too much TV. Man, I mean, yeah, The Walking Dead was, like, a main, my main favorite show. Um, <clears throat> a lot of stuff is, like, older. Like, The Office, like, that mm -hmm. show is old. Like, well, now it's, like, really old, but that was a Blech. show that, I mean, I know a lot of people don't like it, because, like, oh, the humor, it, it's weird, you know? But I don't know. I thought it was funny, because I like Steve Carell. So, I like that show a lot. And I think I actually did, I don't own it anymore, but I did own the seasons on, like, ah. DVD or something. But, yeah. I think we get it now anyway. Isn't it on Netflix anyway? Yeah, it is. The whole, yeah. the whole thing is. So we can so. watch it whenever we want. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Mm. Um, Timbo Slice Charity says, Cat, people are saying the new Call of Duty will play like Overwatch, so will you be playing it? I probably will. You know, just check it out. Yeah? You think you're going to get it? Black Ops 4. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I think I'm gonna skip battle. I'm not gonna get Battlefield though. No. Battlefield lane because I didn't personally. I didn't like World War II, um, the the last Call of Duty game. I just didn't like it, and I don't know. Like I liked Black. O personally, I liked Black Ops Three. I know a lot of people didn't, but I did. So I think because of that, I want to get Black Ops Four. Would it be fair to say that you like the more modernized first person shooters versus the ones that go for old school like World War One or Two? Yeah. I mean, even though a lot of people do like the more old ones, I like the newer ones. I know I'm in the minority there, but... Okay. Yeah. There you go. Uh, shout out to Emperor Swaggins. He says, I'm mistaken. The time skip in Walking Dead is only a few months, not years. Okay. Only a few months. Sorry. What type of loser do you have to be like Swaggins to still be hanging around in that fucking chat? After the way this motherfucker's treated you in the past. Fucking loser, man. Then you get Timbo, the king of the dumbass questions, ask some stupid question to Cat. It's just, you know, it's time to end the series, but I will miss that. Man, I will miss roasting these stupid little motherfuckers that need to be roasted. Some of them don't deserve to be roasted, but the majority of them do, and I will miss doing that. But back to the be Actually, before we go back to the beginning, she says, oh, I know a lot of people don't like The Office, but uh, it, a lot of people don't like The Office. Are you fucking kidding me? Then somebody asked her about the favorite TV show, and she can't even think of it. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. Panda was a million times better. Then she says she doesn't own The Office on DVD anymore. I wonder why you don't own it. Probably because Subaru Man kicked your sorry ass out of the house when you cheated on him and he kept his shit. Again, this is my middle finger to you, Phil. And back to the beginning. Somebody asked about Wheat World or West World and he's making wheat jokes. They were fucking hilarious, Dave. We all laughed. And then another gem is he won't get HBO because it's, quote, a lot of money. And so he doesn't want to get it. Fucking incredible. This might be the scam of the fucking... The century, man. I don't know about... Maybe scam of the year. Maybe not scam of the century, but... This might be the scam of the year. Scam of the decade. He won't get HBO because it's a lot of money. Fucking incredible, dude. Fucking incredible. Let's just see what the next clip is. Fair enough, you know, because because what they say is, well, if they didn't modernize the gameplay, no one would buy it. Well, then d don't make a game based in World War One, then, right? Right. What the fuck? I know. <laughs> uh, Austin make cheered fifty bits, and he says Derek has a message. He's very late last night. My mom and dad were constantly fighting and shouting. Derek was really tired. He's wondering when you were little, did your parents have fights? <laughs> yes, they did. Absolutely. You know, I think, I think, unless you're very lucky. All right. There's going to be a time when your parents have disagreements, fight. Some people's parents break up, right? You know, uh, my parents had a lot of times when they were disagreed. They were in arguments and had issues with their relationship and stuff. I'm not going to get super personal about it because that's honestly, that's their business. It's not for me to reveal personal shit about stuff that happened with my parents. You know, that'd be kind of messed up. Uh, but no, I don't. I was never immune to that. I definitely had situations in my lifetime where stuff was going on with my parents and I was kind of thrown in between it and everything. And it sucks. It sucks. It sucks. Sucks that anyone has to go through that, right? Yeah. All right. Also, make. Oh, I just oh, I just read that. Uh, CJ Euphoria, resubscribe to the channel for the seventeenth month in a row. Thank you very much, CJ Euphoria. Um, let's again check sub count. Let's see here. 
We're still at four. Oh, we went down. <laughs> we went down so I love when that happens. We gained subs, but overall we went down. Well, we're down to four sixteen. Oh no. Let's go out the epic now. Okay. Um, keep going. We got a couple more. It looks like it's actually finally slowing down. Uh, so we'll probably be adjourning soon. Yeah. Uh, Furious Kirk just cheered. He says, "Are you guys anticipating?" Four hundred and sixteen subs. It's actually closer to your actual fan base, there, Phil. It needs to drop by about four hundred, but. You're getting closer there. You're, trust me, you're going in the right direction these days. And Jesus, Derek. Get your fucking pennies together and cheer for yourself. Stop asking other people to cheer for you. You're old enough. But he asked about his parents fighting and asked them, did their parents ever fight? And Phil immediately jumps in and just babbles on and on and won't allow her to answer the question. I wonder why you did that, Phil. Let her speak for herself. And he just took over and I'm not going to let her answer and blah, blah, blah. And talked about his parents and just gave the fucking mixed bag answer as usual. Get the fuck out of my face, man. But yeah, those 416 subs. Again, get it down to about 400 more and then we'll, uh, we'll be closer to your actual fan base, Bud Tay. Next one's a clip. Let's a go. Okay, why don't we go to the sushi restaurant that's near our house that we normally would go to anyway, but we wanted to do something special for her birthday. I guess forget it, we'll just go there. We look it up, closed on Sundays. So we don't even have the option to go to our usual place for sushi because it's closed on the day that we have off for her birthday. Finally, it's like we're at our wit's end, and we're like, what are we going to do? Well, you know, we could sit here, we could bitch, we could moan, we could stamp our feet, we could be upset. You know, it could be a bunch of Karens. Or we could try to make the take the lemons, make the lemonade out of the lemons. So I said, we're going to go home really quick. And I drove us home as fast as I possibly could. I broke the speed limit a couple of times. I broke the, I actually broke the sound barrier a couple of times, I'm sure. Actually, I'm kidding. I didn't break the speed limit. I'm actually, it, it, contrary to popular belief about how I drive in video games, I am one of the more conservative drivers out here. The drivers out here are out of their fucking minds. Like, we're driving on a road. I'm not familiar with the road. Like I said, we're away from home. It says 40 mile per hour speed limit. So I will drive like 40, 45. We got people flying by us going like 70 miles per hour. On a regular road. This isn't a fucking highway. These are regular roads. And by the way, the roads where we were driving on were very narrow with no guardrails on them. So if you drive off this road, you're driving off into the woods. It's like, <laughs> uh, these people are out of their minds. We get home as fast as we can. Jasper's happy to see us. We give him his treat. So what are we going to do? I said, well, there's this Japanese restaurant we have been ordering from recently and getting delivery at home. The sushi that we've tried from there is good. The problem is the delivery sushi isn't great. It comes and it's warm. It's falling apart by the time it arrives because it's delivery. You know, you order anything like DoorDash or Uber Eats. You're not getting it for 30 to 45 minutes after they already made it. So it's, it's all been kind of sitting there. So what we want to do is, well, let's do it anyway. So we ended up ordering like, like three kinds of sushi from this restaurant. And it was pretty good. Admittedly, one of the sushis was outstanding. This is, this one actually had salmon and tuna on top. And it had like, I think it had like crab and other stuff inside of it. That one was like ridiculously good. And normally I'm not one for eating raw fish, but this was like, wow, the flavor was outstanding. One of them was really basic. It was just like cream cheese and tempura shrimp. And it was too basic for me. I didn't like it that much. And then the last one had eel. And I actually like the eel. I think it's like savory. But Kat liked the other one, the, the one with the fish on it better. So anyway, we ended up eating at home. As if, as if it were just a normal day. We ended up ordering it home and getting delivery and eating at home. It sucked, you know. And it, it, it sucks because we had gone out of our way to plan this special day for her and try, I try to do everything possible. She, you know, just so you guys know, because some people ask ridiculous stuff like, oh, did you get her anything? Of course I did. It's actually, I ordered it a bit, a bit ago and what she's getting for her birthday is coming later this week. None I can do about that. Delivery time is delivery time. So she is getting another present. Yeah, you know, it wasn't, this day out was, was supposed to be the majority of her present, but she's getting something else later this week. But you know, it is what it is. It, it, the Daycon, I'll be honest, the day was disappointing compared to what we had imagined it was going to be. But there's not much you can do about that. Sometimes life... This is supposed to be a story about his wife's birthday, and he turns it into a story all about himself, man. It's fucking incredible. He cares about nobody but himself. Back to the beginning of it. Sounds fucking expensive, Phil. 
claiming you don't have money for HBO and all this bullshit, but you got money for restaurants and sushi and multiple places to eat, DoorDash, tips, fees. Sounds expensive, buddy. And he has the nerve to say, well, we're not going to be a Karen. And You're the definition of a Karen. Remember when his PS5 didn't come? And the way he acted and his business was going to be destroyed and all this shit. The exercise bike. This food from the other day. That Burger King shit. Dude is the definition of a Karen, man. Get the fuck out of here. Then he talks about how he's driving 40 miles per hour and people are flying around him. Well, get the fuck out of the way then. I don't got patience for these types of people, man. I'd cut his ass off and flip him off while I'm doing it too. Fuck him. Then at the end, Josh is getting another birthday present, but it's not coming for another week or so. Again, sounds expensive, buddy. But I bet if it was a toy for you, I bet it would have got delivered early, motherfucker. How your Xbox came right on time and your fucking laptop was there for the stream and the hat came right on time. If it was one of your toys, it would have been there early. But for her, eh, fucking next week. We don't give a shit. Next one's a clip. Let's fucking go. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Whether you're live on stream right now watching me on Twitch or whether you're watching this video on demand on my YouTube channel, DSP Gaming, something happened today, completely and utterly unexpected, out of left field. Yes, it's shocking. I don't know what's going on. I'll in a nutshell explain what happened, and I'm going to tell you about what I'm going to do moving forward. It's very important that you guys know what to do about the future of my content, where to watch me and everything, because I've come to a determination, at least for the short term and also for the long term. All right. So, earlier today, I'm streaming, as usual, in the afternoon. Absolutely nothing controversial or anything going on. It's just a normal gameplay stream for me. In fact, quite the opposite. I'm streaming Danganronpa V3, and the game's doing all this sexualized jokes and stuff, and I'm just trying to... Cr I'm cringing through it and saying, man, I just want to get past this and get to the murder mystery, because that's really the appeal for the, of the game to me. Completely different from the person I used to be 10 years ago, right? When I used to be just as perverted as the writers of that game, but I'm a very different guy now, all right? Right in the middle of me streaming, I'm kicked out of the Twitch Partner Program. Inexplicably. There was no explanation at all. It was just an email I received from Partnership Removals saying notice of indefinite suspension and termination for Dark Side Phil saying that I, my partnership is indefinitely suspended and terminated. Period. It doesn't say what I did for that to happen. It doesn't explain anything about this stuff at all. It's just, you're out. Okay? You're out. Um... And quite frankly, you know, when it happened, it shocked me because I wasn't expecting it at all. By the way, I don't know what just happened because someone just tipped and there's no pop-up on the stream and I don't know why because there were pop-ups before. <laughs> so I don't know what happened there. Why are there no pop-ups? Talk about bits in any kind of a financial capacity. So I never did ever again. Okay. Um. So I honestly don't know. Okay. So I went downstairs and I, sp I spoke with my wife. By the way... Cat is completely upset. She's crying. I don't blame her. I'm tired of this abuse. I'm tired of being the guy who gets beat up. I'm tired of the guy. There's people on this site right now on Twitch. All right. They are doing gross stuff. They are doing sexualized stuff. They are preying on their audience. They are doing messed up stuff right now. They are in the partnership program, but I'm not. I'm a guy who just sits here and plays games and has fun on a daily basis, but I'm somehow the target. I'm the one who has to be harassed. I'm the one who has to be attacked. I'm the one who still to this day has to put up with this bullshit on a daily basis. What did I do? And again, if, if this were the Phil of 10 years ago, who constantly was saying over-the-top disgusting sexual... Didn't have a lot to do with Ket there, but I love it. I love it. Woo! Oh, man, man, man. What a fucking glorious day that was. And it filled me with joy. Filled to the brim with joy. I know you're not supposed to celebrate others' failures and miseries and blah, 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 but fuck you, Phil. This clip makes me happy. It makes me want to celebrate. I want to celebrate Gout 100 right now. You deserve it, buddy. Twitch finally had enough of your shit, and you deserve it. 
And then the mention of Ket, direct quote. Ket is completely upset. She's crying downstairs. <laughs> Meanwhile, his eyes are red as shit. She probably said, oh, that's nice, and went back to playing fucking Skyrim as he was just pacing around, bouncing around, crying like a little bitch that he is. And he was making all these excuses of, oh, people hate me, and people troll me, and it's their fault. And he kept saying, I'm the one. I'm the one here doing this. I'm the No, Phil, I'm the fucking one, motherfucker. Neo here. I'm the one. And we get this thumbnail where he's praying to Allah that he, Twitch reinstates his partnership here. Woo! I love that fucking clip, baby. Next one's a clip, and somebody's making their third guest appearance in the series. I think you already know who it is. Yeah, I think it's 45 for the top cheer. Oh, Cody Carl says, be careful with Potion today. Remember what happened with the stress ball a few <laughs> months ago? We wouldn't want that to happen to little Potion here today. No, I'm not going to do that. He's got to be taken care of. Yes, we have to take care and of And Derek has cheered. He says, happy Halloween, Cat And Phil, Bob Ross costume. Uh, I'm currently in my Halloween costume. I'm from, a character from Five Nights oh, at Freddy's. Oh, he ignoring more cheers about Cat. Are you and Cat doing okay. anything with friends? I Ignore. wonder if anything will actually scary will happen in this horror game. So far, 30 minutes in, absolutely nothing. Boy, he is really being weird about this stream. Uh, Scoot over a little more. This way. Yeah, come, come this way, honey. <laughs> Get closer. <laughs> <laughs> nice little shoulder up. Hallelujah. Maybe you should have got a new stress ball for this stream. She obviously need it. Name your poison. I'm looking for my daughter. In this weather? If she's out, she'll be at the Balkan. That's a bar over on Block Street. What the hell is he no, trying to look at? She's a little girl. She's seven years old. We were in a car accident. I came to and she was gone. Oh shit. I'd offer to call for help. But the phones are all out because of the storm. Town is kind of empty. This is her. Mm. A real daddy's girl. If you see her. This your ID? Yeah. Well, it's she just side eye the the whole time. That's a few blocks from here. Uh. Street. That's where I live. She just said that. Mm. That accident of yours. You take a knock to the head? <sighs> yeah. I don't know, this might have been a pretty rough first My game. Phone? What's a phone? <laughs> yeah, you know, I once you go and break, now. his view's gonna drop and ain't never gonna come back to what they like are I now. Said, it's pretty much the high point down. of the stream. I think that was her. Unless something really, really she dumb be at happened. The house. Wait. Have a drink before you head out. You seem pretty shaken up. I need to get home. <clears throat> she... Alright, and I let it go on a little bit too long there, but. What a prophetic statement by Kevin. Direct quote is, his views are going to drop once he goes on break, unless something really, really dumb happens. If you only knew what was coming that night, Kevin. If you only knew. Back to the beginning of the clip. First off, fucking Derek cheered. Where did you get money from, you little fuck? Where did you get this money from? Start paying people back for their cheers, too. You owe, like, fucking thousands of dollars. You owe more than Phil. For all the people that have cheered for you. Derek's sitting there in his Halloween costume. God bless you, Derek. God bless you, buddy. Just have fun, man. Just have fun. Just don't end up like Phil. You need to stop what you're doing on Twitter, but... Just whatever you do, don't end up like Phil, man. But... I let the clip go on for a long time just to show you how fucking awkward it was, man. Like a minute straight of just, and you see her right now, what she's doing, how miserable she looks, and just glaring at the chat. Meanwhile, Phil is so oblivious to it. He doesn't care. Because this is what his life is every day. This horse shit. Sitting there, pretending to care what people are saying online. Looking at the game, just fucking bored out of his mind. Goat laughing. Oh, did you see that? Did you see that, Super Blind Man? Did you see that? This is what his life is, man. And she's fucking just stuck, miserable, 
It's no wonder she stays in her office and doesn't want to fucking do anything with them. And they never have time together, blah, blah, blah. That fucking clip probably sums up their marriage better than any of us could. I'd be willing to bet money on it. It's a good thing they didn't end up doing co-op too, because again, that was just garbage. But yeah, Kevin, if you only knew what was coming, little buddy. Next one's the last one for Ket, and I chose to end with this one for a reason. Again, four-minute clip. Get your snacks and drinks for the fucking pre-stream. Let's uh, go. Ever since I revealed on Thursday about what's going on with this house and everything, and the fact that the taxes are an issue and everything. Um, obviously, there's been all these questions about why do I need the house and stuff like that. But in addition, you know, I've been talking with her every day. And she's like, you know, I feel kind of isolated. Even though, even though she, like I said, she does not want a public persona. She does not want that. She at least feels that to know that if you guys knew that she existed, it would make more sense in the perspective, the big picture perspective. Right? <laughs> Because now your kind of guys are finally kind of see the big picture for the first time ever. And now it's kind of the pieces are kind of fall into place. You know what I mean? It makes sense now. Um, so now you're like, ah, okay, I get it. So now Phil needs to keep the house because he's dating this girl he's been seeing. And obviously if he has to move, then he can't see the girl anymore. And also if he keeps the house, then maybe eventually, you know, they could be in the move living in together. And then they could, you know, both pay for the house. See, it makes sense now. And that's why she kind of wanted me to talk about it today because it now makes everything kind of formulate into a, it makes sense. And let's face it, uh, she's kind of been a secret and, you know, it kind of makes her feel a little bad because when you're kept secret, right, it kind of means like, oh, she's the dirty little secret, you know, she's not. But at the same time, we didn't want to reveal anything until we were ready. So, so there you go. Now, by the way, no, you're not getting her name. You're getting no information about her whatsoever. Zero. Just what I've told you right now is all you're getting until maybe at some time in the future things change and maybe we're in a better position. All right. You know, maybe, just maybe, um, just maybe if we can get out of this situation with the house, if I can pay all these stuff, somehow find a way to pay all these taxes. All right. Then in 2018, yeah, things could be potentially much better. And maybe if she moves in with me, and we start a life together, all right, um, then, then, okay, if she's here living with me, and obviously, you know, you're gonna see me during work hours or whatever, but of course, maybe there'll be some vlogging and stuff that I start doing if she's here with me, like DSP tries it and stuff, where she's gonna be in it, then it makes sense that, you know, yes, there may be more information revealed in a later date, but for now, none of that will be revealed, nothing. People are asking me, what is, uh, what is her ethnicity? She's Martian. She's from the, the planet Mars. And that's really why I got to keep it under, under wraps. Because if I tell you, we'll have the government in here trying to, you know, do all kinds of Area 51 testing and shit. And we can't do that. All right. <laughs> all right. She's not Martian. All right. But that's the deal. Is that, you know, I have to basically keep a lot of information to myself. And I've kept this under wraps since the summer. So I think I've done a pretty damn good job. In fact, like I said, I really had no intention of telling you guys at all about her. Until I started, you know, I revealed my whole tax situation on Thursday, you know, Thanksgiving. And then, you know, all the stuff that's happened since then. And now she's like, well, it probably makes more sense to do it. So there you go. <laughs> there you go, folks. That is the truth about everything that's been going on. Now you've got the bigger picture. Now I've got even more of an incentive. Now you know I have even more of an incentive, even more of a desire to fix this whole tax situation, save the house, you know, and stay where I am so that I could potentially have a, a much better future for myself versus moving back to Connecticut, being a solo bachelor in a piece of shit condo, terrible weather. You know what I mean? <laughs> there you go. He's such a fucking manipulator and a fucking liar, man. He tries to... Back to the beginning, he tries to put all those words out like they were her words. They were clearly his fucking words. So we're supposed to believe that she was like... Direct quote, by the way. If you guys knew she existed, it would make a lot more sense in the big picture perspective. Unquote. 
She wants nothing to do with your fucking audience. Why would she care if they knew about her or not? She didn't even want a public persona. Why the fuck would she care? And he's just lying and manipulating. You've seen her on fucking camera. Do you think she talks like that? Oh, well, if they knew that she existed, it would make a lot more sense in the big picture perspective. Now, how convenient that the fucking taxes mysteriously came out of nowhere. Save the house. How fucking convenient, buddy. And then my favorite part of the fucking clip. She was the dirty little secret. She got tired of being the dirty little secret. She didn't want to be known as the dirty little secret. Well, she was the fucking dirty little secret. Because she was living with another man while she was talking to you. And that's why I have zero fucking sympathy or empathy towards her. Some people say I go too hard on her. I don't give a fuck. She was a whore. Living with another man and talking to this fucking guy. And then he's a fucking manipulator and liar as it is. Fuck him. I got no, I got no patience for either one of them. Fuck him. And you listen to how he sold his audience on her. Oh, we're going to be vlogging and doing DSP tries it. But I need you guys to step up and save the house for me. Then we're going to be doing all these things and living this great life. And look at what actually happened. He finessed these dumb fucks, man. Low IQ people. Literally lying to them. And they sit there and ask for more. And they deserve it. To be honest, man. Fuck them. That's how we end with Ket there again. This is my middle finger to you, Phil. Your little bitch wants to run ops and you want to fucking ignore it? Well, back at you, motherfucker. You ain't going to pay attention the other way. Maybe you'll pay attention this way. Now we move on to the last section of part 20. This is the last section of the last episode. Have a special guest two-for-one appearance to end it with a bang. Now I'd like to thank you all for coming to my restaurant tonight. As you get a special one-time two-for-one offer that's good only for tonight. Let's see who mystery person number one is to catch a pay pig part 20 for the last time. Let's fucking go. And it's not Philly Buckeye. So get ready. Well, uh, Philly Buckeye did a 95-bit cheer. And he says, you asked the other night for a reasonable reward for a second sub goal. What if you promised to do a stream react re reenactment? Of look here, listen from Wings. Philly Buckeye, I don't know how many times I can explain this to you. I'm going to explain it again. I am not Wings of Redemption. I have nothing to do with Wings of Redemption. I don't care about Wings of Redemption. I don't give a fuck about Wings of Redemption. Stop bringing up Wings of Redemption on my streams. He has nothing whatsoever to fucking do with me. The fact that you think that there should be some kind of a weirdo mishmash crossover event... With me and him is fucked up to begin with. I've only told you 5 million fucking times. I am a content creator who focuses on positivity. Who focuses on fun. I want nothing to do with a guy who has habitually lied about me. And wastes my fucking time. And you guys gotta bring him up every waking fucking moment. Grow the fuck up. Wings of Redemption has nothing to do with me and never will. Period. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. I don't know how many other ways I can say it. Seriously. I don't know how many other ways I can say it. Uh, you guys just don't get the picture. I don't want no anything to fucking do with it. Stop. Grow the fuck up. Okay, then. All right, help me in welcoming Wings of Redemption to the fucking series. His first and only appearance in the series. And I know he's not a pay pig, but I figured let's just have a little fucking fun with this one. But, gee, what a positive, mature, good person you are, Phil. To say all those nice things about Wings. Oh, Wingo. Oh, Jordy. Oh, Richard. And it's funny because every time Richard speaks about you, it's always usually in a good light, too. That's the fucked up part. You, know, you hear Sam talk about him, and usually it's in a good light. And then you hear fucking DSP talk about Rich and... Or not Rich. Richard, I'm sorry. And it's fucking that. That's what you get. It's fucking pathetic, but don't don't forget, Phil's this positive, mature person who's changed, and he doesn't spew hateful slurs and all this trash garbage. Whatever, dude. Next one's a clip. Let's go. Okay. 
So we'll see how this goes. Now, I'm going to say this up front. No, I'm not co oping with anyone. I'm not co oping with any other streamers. I'm not co oping with viewers. The whole point of today's stream is for me to just try it uh, on honest kind of uh, just a random online session and see what I think, okay? So even though I do appreciate that some of you had, had offered to co op with me today, I'm not doing that. And no, I never got any message from Wings of Redemption about co oping today. Never did I get any email from him. So regardless of what anyone says, uh, I was open to it. I got nothing about it, so we're not doing it, okay? Um, all right, so that's going to be this first gameplay stream for the day. No second stream tonight. I know normally there would be a second stream on Thursdays. However, um, I am going, I'm not doing one tonight because today is Kat's birthday. That's right, so happy birthday to my lovely cat. Uh, we'll be going out tonight to have a nice dinner together. And maybe even get a birthday cake or something. We're going to see. So we're spending time tonight to celebrate. It's our first time she's been here uh, since we've been together for her birthday. And it's going to be really special to be able to celebrate that together. So I am not streaming tonight. Okay, guys? But I will be back tomorrow with a full day of Spider-Man. A full day. First, my earlier stream. Four plus hours of gameplay. And then another two hour stream later down that night. So, tomorrow, six plus hours of Spider-Man on launch day. Now, already, I've been I've been seeing people in the stream chat, why is it Phil playing Spider-Man today? What is going on? Why is it Phil playing it? I see so many people on Twitch playing it. Ladies and gentlemen, I've explained this many times. I'll explain it again. I am not one of the chosen elite, even though I've been a gamer who has shared his gameplay experiences with you guys daily for the last 10 years. I'm a very outspoken, opinionated gamer. And I hate to say it, but the people in marketing don't really like that. They don't like someone who's going to be outspoken and honest. Um, they want someone who's going to play the game, be PG, and kiss their butt. And I've never been like that. Even games that I love, I'm always critical of them. And I will call out flaws or things that I wish were better while I'm playing the game live. Uh, typically, that does not fly with the marketing department. So you're never going to find me be the guy who gets the early copy of the game or the guy who's playing a week early and gets thousands of people on his stream because he's playing a game before anyone else can play it. But I don't also don't agree. Get to the fucking point, man. Jesus. That's such a stupid argument, too. Oh, the marketing department, they don't like me. This <laughs> You suck at games, number one. You clearly suck at games. You don't know what you're doing. You look miserable. Why would anybody want to sponsor that horse shit? You got these dumbasses on your stream all the time. These stupid names. Big sloppy meat. Fucking Lysifer Soul cheering dumb shit. The three-letter bitch running ops. Why would anybody want to sponsor you? But of course, blame it on the trolls and the marketing department. Back to the beginning. First sign of any human interaction, co-oping, anything like that, he immediately shuts it down and runs away. No, no, no. Then he says he's not fucking co-oping with Wings. He didn't get an email from Wings. <laughs> fucking dinosaur. He didn't get an email. And then, hey, happy birthday, cat again. What a coincidence. Two birthdays in a row. Fucking, sounds expensive, by the way, where y'all went out that night and had all this fun and shit. Sounds expensive, buddy. Thought you couldn't afford HBO, but you got money for multiple birthdays in a week and all this bullshit. And get the fuck out of here, idiots. Next one's a clip. Let's go. We'll check out both, I guess. Uh, William P25 did a $5 tip and said, Shout out to Sean Ranklin. For those who don't know, Sean Ranklin is a detractor of someone else, not me. So, I don't know why this guy decided to say that on my stream. Um, because it has nothing to do with me. But I guess, thanks for the $5 tip. I appreciate the contribution. I guess you're trying to get shoutouts for detractors of other people on my stream. Great. Okay. Thank you for the tip. And the sub, because you subbed too. You subbed and tipped tonight. Okay, then. Someone, it was funny. Earlier today, someone came in here and said... I got banned from Wings of Redemption's uh, stream, so now I'm going to hang out in yours from now on because you're a much cooler person. I was like, I guess that's a benefit to me, right? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, Butter in the sauce to be $5 and wants and says that they love me and they want me to impregnate them so they can have my penne babies. That's disgusting. It's absolutely revolting, but thank you for the $5 tip and let's continue. Okay. 
Absolutely disgusting. I don't know what's wrong with you. Horrible people. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> All right. Gee, Phil, I wonder why you can't get sponsors again, buddy. Because you have dumbasses cheering you and asking you to impregnate them so they can have your penne babies. <laughs> this is your fan base, and I love that you're stuck with it. I love it. Back to the beginning. Shout out to Sean Ranklin. Damn straight shout out to Sean Ranklin. It's an OG right there. Liquid Richard, two big ups. Liquid Richard, shout out Sean Ranklin. All the old school homies. Carlitos, the golden child. That's my boy right there. Shout out to Carlitos. Gustavo, Webby. Just shout out to all the legends back in the day. Can't take this shit no more, man. Anyways, somebody got banned from Wingstream and came to DSP stream because he's a much cooler person. Mother fucking X to doubt that bullshit. I would 150% rather have a beer with Wings than DSP any day of the week. And even though Wings lies about shit, I'd still trust him in a heartbeat over fucking DSP, man. If I needed somebody to come pick me up at 3 in the morning because I was drunk or if I had an accident or something, I'd call fucking Wings. I wouldn't even think about calling DSP because I know what the fucking answer would be. Imagine if he was your fucking brother or something or your uncle or... And you had to call him to rely on him for some bullshit. Imagine how that shit would go, man. Meanwhile, you can call on somebody like Wings who... Eh, he may or may not come through, but you got a better shot with him. Fucking garbage, man. Again, garbage man here calling you garbage. Fuck up out of here. Next one's a clip. Let's go. All right, it's pretty obvious everyone that Poopy Finger is now a fucking troll. <laughs> you can always tell when someone, all of a sudden they start talking about wings of redemption. It's the same memes and the same bullshit every time. Let's ask Phil about wings of redemption. Let's ask Phil about the cat and something that's personal. Let's ask Phil all the stuff. The same shit every time. And people think that, like, I'm, I'm stupid as shit. And I'm not going to notice now. So he, this guy Poopy Finger did one cheer tonight where he asked about Wings of Redemption and me doing co-op with him. Which obviously I'm never going to do. And it's pretty obvious that the guy is just going along with the same fucking memes as before. So I ignored the one cheer so as not to derail the stream. Now the guy's screaming in the stream chat that I'm ignoring him and I don't deserve anything. And he was going to give me $18,000 and now he's not going to do it. Get the fuck out of here. Enough is enough with this stupid shit. <laughs> and there you go. There it is. There's, he, he's just proving he's a troll. He just did it in the stream chat. So stupid. Anyway, Fred Flintstone just cheered and said, I forgot to say Solid Metal Gear Rex and Testicles. Ah, Testicles. It's pretty obvious that we've had all these people recently poopy, poopy this, poopy that. It's the same fucking person. Making new accounts and doing, you know, stupid shit to get me to read their stuff. Give me attention. Give me attention. Wah. Assholes. <laughs> We're really gonna miss that guy. I mean, I'm gonna cry tonight. I'm gonna cry myself to sleep knowing that that guy can't be in my chat anymore. Don't worry, because he'll be back in five minutes with another poopy named account. <laughs> Moron. Thanks for all, for all the fucking free contributions tonight, stupid. <laughs> Moron. <clears throat> Alright, let's continue. Let's continue. We gotta go rub down this guy with oils. It's gonna be so exciting. Gotta go rub down this guy with oils. Gonna be so exciting. Okay. But Poopy Finger. What a shock. Someone named Poopy Finger turned out to be a troll. Now this shocks me. Then he said he was gonna give $18,000. <laughs> Oh, man. And Fred Flintstone cheers. What the fuck? He laughs at testicles. Poopy finger is dumb, but he laughs at testicles. Fucking hilarious. Such a child, man. But Poopy finger got his bitch ass. He heard him. Look how long he went on. Just crying and bitching and carrying himself. Salt. 
All I can taste is salt. Good shit, poopy finger. Next one's a clip and oh, oh. You are going to get a motherfucking kick out of this one. Where am I right now? I mean, I'm in a good position. Is it time to camp? Is it time to camp? A top 40, should I camp? Oh my god. Alright, so someone told me that Wings of Redemption got banned for two I weeks. Someone right. told me so what happened, why he got banned for two thing. weeks. So I, so I know it's something I shouldn't be doing. Anyone know actually what happened? guy over there he was gonna leak people's PayPal info why would he do that maybe it was, oh I see maybe there was a troll and he thought if he leaked their PayPal info he could get back at them or something no that's a no no oh, hell no that's that basically that's considered a dox threat you can't do that shit man oh shit he's right there fuck if you'd stand still I had him I only needed two shots, but he moved. <clears throat> yeah, he's going to keep moving. I'm not going to get a clear shot on him. I think he went back down. Oh, there he is. Fuck. Well, that didn't work. Well, I guess I got to leave now. He knows I'm here now. He stalls all that motherfucking time and still doesn't even get the guy. <laughs> then he has to run away. <laughs> but let's get back to the beginning. And these are all direct quotes. Why did he get banned? So I know it's something I shouldn't be doing. It was a troll and he was going to leak their PayPal info. That's considered a dox threat, and I would never do that. That's a big no-no. Isn't it Shawn Michaels? PW dubs, eh? Fucking incredible. No self-aware. Well, I guess this happened before then, but still. It's just funny how this shit works, man. It's karma. It's fucking karma. Sits there and says all this shit in the light. But in the dark, he does totally different things. And, oh, you know what? What am I talking about? That was PW Dubs heinously setting up Phil in the future. What the fuck am I even talking about? How could I even think that Phil would do something like that? PW Dubs set him up. He went in the future and then set him up back in time. Fuck, what am I thinking about? Fuck me. Next one's a clip. Let's go. Yes, Cody Carls, this is not even a new troll meme. Listen to this. So Cody Carls truly said, what's people saying you planned your sickness a month in advance to avoid a podcast? This is a new troll meme. This apparently is based on something that happened like three years ago. I think it was supposedly supposed to be a podcast that of all people, Wings of Redemption wanted me to be on. Um, long before I became a full-time streamer and somehow Wings of Redemption memes became a part of my streams, which I don't even understand how the fuck that happened. But... Like, three years ago, they wanted me to be on a podcast, okay? Um, basically, when it was supposed to be, I got sick. I felt awful. I didn't do any work that day at all. I didn't stream nothing. I was very sick. And I told them I would still like to be on the podcast. Let me know when they're going to do it again uh, so that I could be on because I would still like to be a guest. They said, okay, we'll let you know. Well, I never, ever received another email whatsoever from, from Wings of Redemption ever again. Never. I never got an email about it at all period. Um, apparently later that week, I got better. I went back on stream. I was streaming again, waiting to hear from them. Apparently they had the podcast without telling me. And the whole podcast was about how I, I lied about being sick. I dodged them. And apparently they riffed on me the whole podcast, even though I don't know anything about it. I was honestly sick. I couldn't be on the podcast because I was sick. I told them I wanted to be on it later. They did it again without ever telling me it was happening. And then they made fun of me the whole time. So after that, I was like, why the fuck would I ever want to be on these idiots' podcasts? They're a bunch of fucking assholes who just wanted to start drama. It's apparent this is what they wanted to begin with. So I, I never cared about it again. I guess 
one of the assholes from that podcast apparently made a joke this week about, oh, I wanted Phil on my podcast in August, but he already told me in advance he's going to be sick next month. So basically, I guess he's making some kind of fucking insult against me, underhanded insult about something that happened three fucking years ago that I literally had nothing to do with. It's all them creating the drama and lying to make drama for themselves to make, I guess, some content for their, their streams or whatever. So basically, a shithead lying out of their ass to get drama oh attention. God. Are you surprised this is with the state of people on the internet? Idiots lying about stuff to get drama attention for themselves? <clears throat> Apparently this guy, too. I've never even talked to this guy. Like, I've never even talked to this guy before, ever. I don't know who the fuck he is. I've never had contact with the guy who's talking shit about me. Mental fucking gymnastics. This dude has a track record and a history of conveniently getting sick or having some bogus shit to do whenever he has to interact with somebody. It's funny how that fucking shit works, isn't it? Whenever it's outside of his snort fort or not in his little fucking hug box, oh, he gets sick or he's busy, he doesn't have the time. But when it's with somebody like the quartering or that Jake James, whatever the fuck his name is, he has all the fucking time in the world. Pressing X to motherfucking doubt that. And yes, Phil, the drunken peasants needed your drama for their show. Yes, Phil. This dude can barely break 300 fucking viewers, but the drunken peasants needed him for their show. The fuck is he talking about, man? Whatever, idiot. Next one's a clip. Let's fucking go. Ah. Uh, no king of hypocrisy. I certainly don't see myself, Wings of Redemption and, and Refutech USA, doing a podcast together talking about being harassed online. In particular, all I know is I've had much extensive experience about it. I probably, I mean, I don't know, again, I don't know anything about those guys. I don't know what extent they've been trolled. But from what my experience, you know, the more you talk about it, the worse it gets. Slash, the more attention you give it, the more it happens. So I wouldn't even give it the time of day. If anything, eventually, maybe I'll write, I'll write a tell-all memoir. Where I will explain everything for the first time ever. I will re reveal all the truths of all the trolling that I went through over the years. Yes, it'll be a tell-all story. Phil's memoir, lifetime memoirs. Yeah, right. <laughs> For me, it's like I said, I just don't give a fuck. I just want to keep playing games and having fun. And quite frankly, the trolling has kind of died down a lot lately, which I'm pretty pleased with. I don't know if it's just that because for me, maybe I'm not doing things that are all considered so negative anymore that people just hate my guts anymore. I don't know. Um, I've tried to change and mellow out and become a lot different over the years. I think maybe it's starting to finally people are realizing, oh shit, you know, Phil really has changed. Um, you know, at least in regards to the things that people used to hate my guts for. Um, but really the trolling has not been so bad recently. There's been, don't get me wrong, there's always a constant of trolling and people trying to screw with me and do stupid things to me. But, you know, the actual really malicious, malicious nasty stuff for a few months now, it's kind of been on hiatus, so that's a good thing, I think. Um, Kitty Slayer Chudy said, Is it possible for you to do a dual stream with Wings of Redemption? Again, I don't know anything about the guy. I'm not going to comment on him. I'm not looking to do co-op or a stream with anyone else, so there you go. That is a silly question. <laughs> Drop some stuff. <clears throat> It's obvious the people that are they're saying all this stuff about Wings of Redemption came over from his stream. He must have ended, and so they came over here now to... Let's 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 bring the nonsense to Phil's stream. I mean, at least people are being respectful. You guys aren't being nasty or anything, so I don't mind it. But just understand, I'm not going to make this about another streamer the stream. <laughs> Again, nothing against him. I know nothing about him. I'm just saying this is my stream, and I'm going to focus on what I'm doing. All right. You know, back to the beginning, I never mentioned King of Hypocrisy before, but he was a pretty good troll. He was stupid for giving DSP money like that, but he was a pretty good troll. I can't lie on that one, but Phil mentions a tell-all memoir that he might write eventually. Are you going to admit the mobile game shit then, you motherfucker? Lying-ass bitch. 
He talks about the trolling died down. You know, it's not as bad anymore. It's because you're boring as fuck, dude. It's your, you're just boring as fuck. You think you're some, you know, this OG with this legacy and you're this big shot. And the truth is nobody's heard of you outside of this fucking side of the internet, man. I've had my account forever, bro. And I didn't even come across you till down from the rabbit hole. Just, I'd never even heard of you. Nobody's heard of you, man. But you think everybody needs, needs to watch your shit and... Everybody should know about all your fucking legacy and garbage and blah, 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 whatever. So anyways, that was a special Wings of Redemption entrant into this or entry into the series. Now we're going to get the second entree of the night. The other half of the two for one. Let's see who we have here. It and put a lot of time into it. I may not want to do harder just for the fact that I want to rear time constraints be able to finish it within a certain amount of time and not that it's a four week playthrough you know what i mean um so i guess we'll see but would i consider it yes but people better you know let me know what's going on is it, is it viable is it something that i should do or not i don't know alice telemon did 100 bit cheers i don't want to stir any pots but from someone who has been the victim of trolls himself i don't understand why rich from review tech usa gives your trolls a podium so often in his videos i don't know I don't watch his videos. I don't care about the fucking guy. What I know about is the guy is basically bipolar. And what I mean by that is one day he'll be supportive. Wow, I really feel for Phil. That accident that happened in 2016. You know, he was one of the few YouTubers that kind of stood up and instead of making fun of me, he said, wow, that was a legitimate accident, but I think he'll be okay if he just stays the course and stays positive. And then next thing you know, oh my God, did you see Phil's views are down on his channels? How's he going to keep it in business and stuff? It's like, what? Like, how could you be so positive and be a nice guy and the next thing you're doing drama videos about me and shit? Like, what the fuck? So I want nothing to do with the guy, really. I mean, seriously, I I don't care about him. He could do whatever the fuck he wants. He's probably already in dire straits because he's reliant on YouTube income. He doesn't have a streaming presence like I do. Um, So I don't know what the fuck he's doing with videos. I could give two shits. And if he's doing drama videos, fuck it. You, go ahead and fall right in line with all the other losers on YouTube who can't put out any kind of actual constructive positive content and make a quick buck. Sorry, you know, if that's what you got to do. Lowest common denominator, hey, whatever. I'll have nothing to do with it. I'm in a totally different venue here on Twitch. I'm having fun doing what I'm doing, so fuck everything else. Uh, Jean d'Arc just gave me a $20 tip. And he says, I can't always give this much, but you certainly deserve it, man. Thank you. He says, good for you on rising above the negativity. Honestly, man, you're a good person. You went through a lot of shit recently. Thanks for always being so cool and making me laugh. Thank you, Jean d'Arc, for that really nice, you know, generous tip and the support. I appreciate it. Good for you for raising above the negativity. Did you hear what he just said? About the two-for-one special entrant into the series, Rich from Review Tech USA. Fucking, ooh, 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 ooh. Let's go back to the beginning. So he's talking about people voting in whatever game. And this is a direct quote. People better let me know what's going on. Go back and watch it if you need to. People better let me know what's going on. And then he tries to fucking walk it back. Fucking asshole, man. People have to do his job for him. Imagine if I told all of you to do all the research for me, get all the clips for me. And then I uploaded the motherfucking video and took super chats and tips for it. What the fuck, man? People better let me know what's going on. And then, probably the gem of this entire section, he called somebody else bipolar. He called Rich bipolar. This fucking guy. The guy who just gets depression out of nowhere on a day where he doesn't have money or he loses his mobile games. And then he gets depressed and puts out a four-hour fucking video. And blames everything that he ever did on his depression. Calls somebody else bipolar. And then he said, this is a direct quote, by the way. He's probably in dire straits financially because he's reliant on YouTube income. He doesn't have a streaming presence like I do. You gotta love it when words come back to bite you in the ass. Who's reliant on YouTube income now, you punk motherfucker? And you talk about somebody else being in dire straits financially and look at you, you bankrupt bitch. Isn't it Shawn Michaels? 
Now, I, you know, I'll admit, I don't watch much of Rich's content. But it's hard for me to believe that he begs the way that you do, Phil. Whether fucking Rich is begging or not or whatever he's doing. I don't know because I don't watch his content. But make no mistake about it, dude. You're a dirty, filthy beggar. And you always will be. And I, you know what? I should have included my favorite clip of all time. I'm going to be living month to month. Paycheck to paycheck, begging for tips and shit for the rest of my life. And again, that wasn't even meant to be public. That was a private Q&A Patreon video. And that's my favorite of all time because it's real and you have no choice but to face it. Next one's a clip. Let's go. Matured, and I realize there's other things out there outside of Street Fighter. <clears throat> um, from Tom. Or actually, you know what? He's better known as Ghost23. What is your attitude from well, with Rich from Review Tech USA? Um, that's an interesting question. I don't know that I have any kind of an attitude or even relationship with Rich from Review Tech USA. I know who he is. I know he has a successful YouTube channel and presence. Um, I don't know why people seem to talk about us in relation to each other sometimes. I don't get it. I'll be honest with everyone. I know that Leanna used to watch some of his videos. I know that. Because I've seen, I've seen her sometimes watching them. Um, I know sometimes she would talk with him on Twitter about stuff. I don't know what it was about. I don't care. It's not my business, right? Uh, but I don't watch his videos. I had nothing to do with them. And all I know is that at one point, all of a sudden, my Twitter started getting spammed with stuff from him and or his viewers about, like, dudes who are not, like, hairy dudes showing their nipples off. Like, silly, stupid shit. So here I am on Twitter. Everyone knows my Twitter, you know, is... Yes, it's personal, but it's also for business. So imagine I'm trying I'm trying to get feedback on what I did today in my videos. And I go to Twitter to see, gee, what's everyone's feedback on this new thing I did? And it's a bunch of white and fat naked dudes with hairy nipples and shit. I'm like, what the fuck is this? This is stupid shit. I don't want this on my Twitter. So I just started blocking things. Apparently, at one point, I blocked Rich from Review Tech. And he noticed and said something like, gee, I guess Phil blocked me. I don't know what I did or something. I don't know. I have no idea. All I know is that when I see nonsense on my Twitter... I get rid of it so that I can actually do work on Twitter or get feedback and talk to people on Twitter and not have that kind of stupid shit going on on my Twitter. So, apparently, at one point, Rich got a bug up his ass about me blocking him on Twitter, and he started, like, repeatedly doing, trying to tweet me even though he knew he was blocked. He would put that period in front of my name so he could still tweet me. Even though I wouldn't see his tweets, I would see all, all his viewers would tweet and retweet what he tweeted, and I would get the tweets anyway. Uh, you know, I, I'm so... Just not caring about this stupid, dumb shit. I don't give a fuck about any of this silly, like, this is like, like college dorm room frat shit. You know what I mean? Like, I was past this 10 years ago when I was done with college. I was done with, with this kind of uh, hijinks. <clears throat> so I don't care about it. I just ignored it. So then, two months ago, my incident happened on YouTube. I'm not going to go into, into detail about it. And everyone on the internet talked about it and covered it for a couple days, and then it went away. Predictably, no one cares about it anymore, okay? Rich, in particular, covered it. And surprisingly enough, someone said, Phil, did you know that not only did Rich cover it, but he, like, did the most positive video ever about you? Did you see it? And I was like, I don't really care, but you know what? A viewer show it said, let me, maybe it's a trick, I'm going to click it, and, you know, you know. And a, Rich made, like, a really nice video. He was like, you know, this thing happened to Phil. It's obvious if you watch the video, it wasn't intentional. It's legitimately a mistake. And he was, like, really embarrassed about it. And at first, maybe he may have tried to lie about it, but then he fessed up to it. He manned up to it. And, you know, anyone else, if they had done something like this, and then they tried to vehemently deny that it was what happened, probably could have been the end of their YouTube career. But Phil's taking it in stride. He's joking about it. Look at his Twitter avatar. He even has an internet meme that's comparing him to an inter ongoing internet meme. This is the right way to go about it. And I think he's going to be okay. And he even went out of his way to say in this video, I don't have a good relationship with the, guy, with the guy or anything. I'm not trying to kiss his ass or whatever. But I like the way that he went about it. And, you know. There's a lot in that fucking clip, man. And by the way. Once I start doing uh, releasing videos here, this is going to be one that we go over for sure. Because I found so much in this one. So it'll be either a pre-recorded or a live stream coming out soon. Um, I kind of figured out a schedule that I'm going to keep with, but we'll talk about that at the end of the video. Going back to the beginning of it. I don't know who Tom was, but he just doxes him right at the fucking start. He gives his username out plus his real name out. 
And then he starts talking about Rich, and it's probably why he hates Rich. He used to go back and forth with Rihanna on Twitter, and it's probably why he hates him. Who knows, maybe Rihanna's with Rich now, and that's why DSP won't do anything with him. No, I think Rich is married, but it's just funny to think about. And then he talks about going onto his Twitter timeline, and there's a bunch of white, fat, naked dudes with hairy nipples. What the fuck, man? What the fuck? And then he talks about his incident. <laughs> he fucking quotes, does hand quotes, air quotes, and says, my incident. Can you imagine being this guy, man? Could you fucking imagine this? You have to walk around talking about your incident. <laughs> oh, my God. And then he... He talks about Rich putting in a good word for him in the video that he made. And then DSP starts talking about himself and tries to put himself in a good light and goes, well, you know, at first he may have tried to lie about it, but then he fessed up to it. And that's a direct quote. It's fucking unbelievable how his mind works. What was there to fess up to, you idiot? You jerked off live in front of a camera. What are you fessing up to? There's nothing to fess up to. Motherfucker's right there. Then why the fuck won't you collab with them then? He was nice to you. He put in a good word for you. Made a video in support. And you just... You string him along. And trust me, I got something else coming up in another clip. You just string him along. And that's what you love doing to people. And we all know it. Next clip. And quite honestly, that's why people hate me on YouTube. That is definitively number one, the reason that people hate me on YouTube. It's not that I said that. It's that some fucking idiot spins it to say that's the only thing Phil ever said. Here's the negative thing Phil said. It would be like if one time, if President Obama of the United States at one time was really frustrated about one thing and he made an underhanded or a, a comment that really wasn't characteristic of 95% of the stuff that maybe Obama would ever say and he said this one thing, but that's the only thing that was on the fucking internet today was Obama said this one thing. Everyone would think that he's an asshole, right? But the bottom line is that he, he has all this other positive spin coverage too. And that's the thing is, I don't get the positive spin. All I get is the negative for years. Let's watch an entire 15 hour playthrough of what Phil did and take the one and a half hours out of it where he really sucked and or was really frustrated and or said stuff that could be, you know, insinuated as being insulting, take it completely out of context of the whole playthrough and say this was his playthrough of this game when in reality that's not what it was. It was a 15 hour long playthrough where for a good 10 plus hours the, the content was good, there was fun stuff, I was succeeding at the game, I wasn't blaming the game developers, I wasn't going crazy swearing and insulting people, but that's the thing. Take the one negative out of context, make the video about it, well, hands off, and I got my views for today, making Phil look like a piece of shit. And that's what it is. That's the reality of my daily existence here on fucking YouTube, all right? Usual, and I play Watch Dogs and all this, and I really didn't hear anything. All day, I didn't hear anything. And all of a sudden, overnight, apparently, I got a bunch of tweets. In regards, it's it's uh, Rich from Review Tech USA, who watched the video from the kid who steals my stuff on a daily basis, that piece of shit, watches this fucking out-of-context video, and he tweets me and he says, Phil, you know, this video is the reason why people are turned off to your streams and turned off to you as a person on YouTube and your content. This is why people hate you on YouTube, because of comments like this. And I look at it and immediately I'm like, but this is a completely out of context comment, right? It's a one, it's the one moment of weakness where I said something bad that I openly admit now, I apologize for, it was wrong, I shouldn't have said that, and it's certainly not the case, I don't think my viewers are lazy, that's bullshit, and that was just the frustration of it just coming out of me and me saying it wrong, I don't think my viewers are lazy, I just think there's something fucking going on, I gotta figure out what it is, right, what is that core thing that doesn't keep someone engaged for a live stream, I don't know what it is right now, I don't get it, you know, um, and so, you know, he said, th you know, this is this is the kind of thing that happens that makes you look bad. And, you know, I appreciate that feedback. But what I wish Rich wouldn't do would be saying that publicly on Twitter. Because then what happens is, oh, wow, Phil said that? Phil's a piece of shit. They don't see in context. Again, Rich sees it. And Rich 
kind of knows my history, and Rich kind of knows there's a bunch of kids who fucking make it their life's work to just make my life miserable. He gets that, because he gets a lot of that too on YouTube. He gets a lot of that kind of hate. In fact, a lot of the same people who hate on me hate on him on a daily fucking basis. So it's kind of weird that we kind of, we have nothing to do with each other. We barely ever talk. We have like no relation. Even our content is vastly different, yet we still get the same kind of hate. So obviously there you're kind of seeing a pattern, right? And it doesn't really have to do with the content or whatever someone's coming out. It just seems that there's certain people that gravitate towards other people on YouTube and attack the fuck out of them. I'm just saying. But anyway, Rich sees this and he tweets it and he's well-intentioned and I appreciate that he tweeted it because I look at it and I'm like, wow, Rich is right. It's it, Looking at just that moment of what I said, completely out of context, makes me look like a piece of shit and he's absolutely fucking right. Um, and I shouldn't say stuff like that publicly and that's a, a shortcoming of mine because I'm so real because I talk about this stuff with you and I share this personal experience with you on YouTube all the time. Stuff like that, that's a mistake comes out and that's what becomes the focus of the negative assholes on YouTube, right? Um, he called his viewers lazy because he's so real. That was his fucking excuse. This fucking guy's delusional, man. This clip, though, this is the perfect example of why I can't do the series anymore. It's fucking exhausting. You know, trying to get these fucking clips, and it is just exhausting. And this summed it up more than any other one for me, why I can't do this anymore. But let's go back to the beginning of the clip. So he's talking about, you know, people not having context of why he called people lazy in that one clip. Called his viewers fucking lazy. Rich makes a video on it. Of course they don't have the fucking context, man. Of course they're going to watch the two minute clip to get the fucking, to get the details. To get the context, they'd have to sit through 50,000 of your fucking pre-streams. 50,000 of your boring ass video playthroughs. Like, I, w I don't even want to think about how many videos you've uploaded to YouTube throughout your entire life. And you want people to have context. This is why I said earlier you think you're some big shot that everybody needs to know your legacy and you want everybody to have context. And man, why would they? You cry wolf, you chicken little, you feign distress. Nobody's going to sit through that shit to get context and take you seriously, idiot. Then he brings up Obama. It's fucking incredible, man. Then the direct quote is, he gets all this other spin coverage and I don't get that. Again. Why would anyone sit through all your garbage to do that for you? Somebody else would have to do it because you're too lazy to fucking do it yourself. And you wouldn't even pay them to do it, man. You want people to just get all this positive coverage and go share it with everybody and do all this? For what? You don't fucking pay them. You don't do any. You barely even thank them. Look at Papa Vera. Look at people like Lord Lamb. Popsy Colo. You just used and fucking moved on from. And Rich tweeted at you publicly and made that video because he can't get a hold of you any other way. Can't get your fucking attention any other way. Look at the situation right now. You're asking him, oh, fucking email me. Email me. He doesn't want to fucking email you. And if he does, it's probably going to go to spam anyways. Because he got too many WWE champions receipt emails in there. Plus all the other garbage from your three-letter bitch. How the fuck's he supposed to get in contact with you? That's why he tweeted you. That's why he made that fucking video. You're so dumb. You can't even make this guy understand, man. Fucking idiot. Next one's a clip. Let's go. Seriously, that's the best advice I give to anyone. If you actually care about someone or you want to see them do well or whatever, here's my best advice. Leave them the fuck alone. Seriously, just don't talk about them at all. Leave them alone. Let them fucking do their own thing. If you don't think it's the right thing, fine. Leave them alone. If you have a following on YouTube and you constantly say, Oh, this person's not doing the right thing. You're going to hurt that person. All your following is then going to go hurt them and troll them. Which is exactly what happens. And he knows that. He knows that he needs views and he knows he needs drama money. And that's why he fucking does that shit. I heard him, but I didn't kill him. I thought maybe I could get a headshot. They didn't give it to me, though. Supply drop inbound. Uh. 
I mean, the name of his channel is Review Tech USA, and he does review of tech, apparently. But when the majority of his content is drama and current events, that should say something. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm supposed to be a tech reviewer, but 95% of my content is negative drama crap. Or news stories and reactions to news stories. Then obviously you failed at what you were trying to set out to do to begin with. And you had to do other shit and follow all the pattern of everyone else because you're unoriginal and you weren't good enough at being a tech reviewer to fucking make a living to begin with. You know what I mean? At least I could say, yeah, I've had ups and downs. I've done the same thing since day one. I play games and have fun with them, period. Like, that's what I do. I'm not going to change to do anything else. That's my core content and always will be. You know what I mean? <clears throat> well, I just got sniped in my ass. I'm still getting sniped in my fucking ass. Please stop sniping me in my ass. I'm out of here. I'm not going to change to do anything else. It's a direct quote. I'm not going to change to do anything else. Then he starts immediately getting sniped in his ass. Again, karma. Trying to tell you something. I'm not going to change to do anything else. Well, gee, Phil, I wonder why you fucking struggle so much. Fucking dinosaur, man. He's such a fucking crybaby, too. Oh, leave them alone. If you really want to help them, leave them alone. You open yourself up to criticism when you beg the way you do. You can't account for all this money that you ask for. You can't account for it. It's reality. That's why people fucking go after you. That's why people look after everything. People run the numbers and shit because they know it's bullshit and you're lying. It's not possible. Leave them alone. <laughs> Let me beg the way I want to, but leave me alone. He thinks he's better than Rich, too. You heard the way he was talking about him? He thinks he's better than Rich. It's fucking hilarious. Again, just like I said earlier, man, I doubt Rich is begging the way that you do, buddy. I know he's, Rich is a log cow too, and he's had his fucking moments, but I can guarantee you he don't beg the way that you do, man. He at least tries to change and adapt and go to new content and do new shit, but not you. I'm not going to change to do anything else. Now you're just going to beg harder, motherfucker. The next one is the last clip. And, well, let's see what we got. Cheat on YouTube. So I need to start doing it. Okay? <clears throat> and so he started making that kind of content. Um, and then he found himself sucked into that vortex. The drama vortex where every day he has to put out a new drama video, a new spin. You know, there's days when he talks about me specifically. Just me. And I'm like, but, but Rich, we have no relationship. I'm not your friend. We don't have any kind of uh, of uh, interactions, right? Why would you bring me up? You know, what really, I'll be honest, what really irked me was years ago when he started making videos about how my YouTube channels were dying and all of this. And I'm like, let's just for a moment, right? Let's say that that was true. Do you really think that making videos like that helps? No. What that does is it hurts. It actually makes people think negative, toxic things about a content creator who apparently you don't hate, so why would you make that content? And the answer is because you want to make money. You have nothing to talk about that day. You want to make that drama content to make money, you know? Um, and that pissed me off, <clears throat> you know? And that's the thing about Rich is I think that he's actually someone who could not be a toxic content creator. He's someone who could actually review tech, play games, have a positive community. But what happened was he fell into the vortex of the, the kind of shit that Keemstar does, H3H3 does, and a lot of other people do and said, oh, it's profitable if I do this, right? It's profitable if I make the drama content. It's profitable if I blow up people's lives and their personal shit, you know. And, the, you know, same thing with, I'll say this with this lawyer guy, Nick Recchietta. If that's how you say his name, I have no idea how you say his name, right? I don't feel that Nick is a bad guy. I don't think that. And I don't think that for the four months that he was trying to publicly cover my bankruptcy proceedings, uh, that he was trying to be malicious. I actually don't believe that. I actually believe that he's someone who, again, got sucked into the vortex of, oh, 
This is the kind of content that brings in the views. So if I have a show where I talk about Phil's bankruptcy filing publicly, and I say that as a lawyer, I can give more perspective to this, I'll get attention for myself. Oh, look, that really blew up. So now let's have a hours long podcast with people who hate Phil so they can just shit on him constantly and make jokes at his expense to make him look bad, you know? And that's what I mean. It's a slippery slope. Um, it's a slippery slope uh, where the further you dive down into this this toilet of shit, the more stuck you get in the, in the doo-doo. You know what I mean? Um, and that's why I won't do it. That's why I'm not gonna I, I'm not gonna come out here and talk about people's personal fucking lives and stuff. You know, I'm not gonna del I'm not gonna be a toxic content creator. I want to just have fun with games, and I hope you guys understand that. You know. The past couple of days have been so weird that, like, now people are talking about this kind of content creation and saying, oh, it's bad. Hey, Nikki Rackets, how you doing? Welcome to the show, buddy. Good to have you here. Can I get an exclamation PayPal in the chat, please, from somebody? I figured the two-for-one entree deal wasn't good enough for y'all, so I threw in a free dessert of Nick Recky out of there. Hopefully you enjoyed that free dessert there. Buddy, Nick Recchietta streams almost every night and gets like a thousand viewers per stream usually. He doesn't need you for the garbage views. You fucking idiot. Again, this guy thinks he's hot shit and he has some legacy and he's this and that. You're a fucking garbage person. People cover you because it's funny sometimes to laugh at you and the dumb shit that you do. Outside of that, this is a part-time thing, motherfucker. We go back to the beginning of the video or the beginning of the clip. It's crazy that he literally repeats himself every single time he talks about rich. It's literally the same thing. It's a fucking playbook. It's a script. And it just never changes, man. But the quote in there that got me the most was, what really irks me is years ago when he started making videos about how my YouTube channels were dying and all of this. I thought you didn't hold grudges, motherfucker. I thought you didn't wait till people were down to kick them. He loves holding this shit over Rich's head, man. He gets off on telling people like Rich to keep emailing him over and over and to try to get him on his show. He's so, he's sick. He's fucking sick. You can say all you want that this shit's not true and conspiracy theories and tinfoil hats, moving the goalposts, blah, blah, blah. And all we have to do is check your track record, buddy. Check your history. And you can say you changed all you want. But history keeps repeating itself. And it's repeating itself right now with you, my Fuhrer. Fuck you. And that is part 20 of To Catch a Pay Pig. No more, no mas. We're going to move on to something else. It's time to move on. Thank you for, you know, shit, man. Part one, when I put it out, I didn't know what to expect. And it blew up more than I ever thought it really would, to be honest, man. And then part two, three, and then it just, it started flowing from there. So thank you for subscribing, commenting, liking the fucking videos. That shit blew me away, especially. Those likes on that first video blew me away. Wasn't expecting that. Quick thank you to... Sasha, again, for the thumbnails, man. You know, you really fucking helped. These thumbnails made the videos stand out. So I'm indebted to you. Thank you very much, brother. Uh, quick thank you to Caesar. Uh, he showed a little bit of support after part 19. So I got to give a thank you to you, homie. Uh, Ram3D, his first time, he showed some support as well. Thank you so much, brother, during the week. I really appreciate it. And uh, BW Dubs. Well, biologist, man, it's like the third or fourth time. Thank you, dude, for, again, having the faith. And I know you love the series and, you know, shit. Hopefully you enjoyed this one, brother. Thank you for the contribution as well. Um, I started to, I was going to go one of two ways. I was going to, I had like some music to play and then I was going to do some highlights. But the fucking video is going to get claimed. We're already pushing two and a half fucking hours. So I decided against it. I was going to give a long list of thank yous, but it's just I'm going to leave people out and I just can't do it that way. So just know that, 
you know, shit, if I said your name in the past, it, it, I'm saying it again as a thank you, but I, I can't list everybody because I'm going to leave people out. But when you see me, say what's up to me or, or just, you know, just say something to me and I'll, I'll address you for sure. You know I do. Most of y'all know I do. Um, Man, thank you again. I'm not fucking stopping, so don't worry about that. I'm The schedule is going to be probably two pre-recorded videos a week and two live stream a week, two live streams a week. And that's kind of how I figured I can uh, go around my work schedule. I got a list of fucking videos that I can go over. Um, you know, half of them live streams, half of them pre-recorded. You know, I'm I'm excited to try this shit. I'm learning stuff. I got my computer, by the way. I got my fucking computer. I got a new mic. I'm going to be moving soon, so that might throw a cramp into things. But, um, you know, I'll start putting out videos and old school Tevin style videos. Praise be Tevin, GTG, and Lee, Sunspot. Sunspot especially, man. I didn't forget about you. You know, you're not making bacon sweats, but... You know, you supported me a lot early on. And Lee, GTG, gave me good advice early on. You know, just thank you. Thank you, and you'll be seeing me sooner than you know. I promise you. Thank you for supporting. Fuck you, DSP. You're a piece of shit. And you're the reason that I make these fucking videos, and I will continue to make them. Fuck you. Let's fucking go.